Okay, connection's looking good. Let's see if anyone's here. So I know we are connected. I've been having this error lately where when I connect, it doesn't quite connect every time. Uh, fear it. All right, there we go. We have someone here. All right, let me do the start of the video and then I will uh, start talking. So for everyone that's watching afterwards, we'll do a little start here. So, hello, my YouTube friend Pop Comics here. And in today's video, we have a long box of comics that uh, my friend Sean and Jason put together for me. I have a little bit of a garage sale haul, and I have a whole bunch of packages to go through. All right, let me, uh, I'm going to go really slow. People kind of come in. All right, we got seven people. I want to get to at least like 30 before we really, really, really start. Uh, so, you know what? I'm going to start out with a little bit of the garage sale uh, haul. So, I had a little stack of comics. Uh, it was a woman that I met two weeks ago that was having a garage sale. She said her, she had a whole bunch of her son's comics. Um, I thought we had planned out the meet up to go through the comics, but she just planned another garage sale. So it was a little bit frustrating, but she let me go through a bunch of stuff that she hadn't put out. And uh, the coolest thing I got was this uh, Baron Karza Micronauts figure for 40 bucks. 40 bucks is a good price. We looked on eBay. It's like a 50 to 80 in this condition. So $40 felt really good. Okay. <laughs> Jason, I, I, what movie is it? Let me know. I want to know what movie, if it's worth uh, missing out on uh, my stream or not. <laughs> also, I did a fun AI image for the thumbnail. I don't know if that's going to get people in here or not. Hey, Tina. Ah, oh, he is freaking dope. This is probably one of my all-time favorite action figures. I think he's supposed to have a little teeny red missile, so that might be missing. But it looked like he had all the other little parts. This thing is so, so dope. I think this is my second one I have in the box. But when I saw it there, I was like, I have to grab another one just because I love it so much. I love the black color with the red highlights. I love, um, like, he's magnetic in the joints. So he's held together with magnets. So there's just something about that set here. Hey, Raya. Listen. Just that little snap. I love it. A little magnetic snap. <laughs> just clicks in place. It uh, has very violent missile there. This is like the... We're going to ban it because it'll hurt children level of firepower. I think... Yeah, you could put it... This is, no, I don't think that one... I think there's actually a little teeny missile that you'll have to put in there. Uh, I believe his hand does have a missile, though. Uh, let's see if I can do it. Yeah, that's a pretty decent firepower there. <laughs> Both hands you could fire. Yeah, it was cool. I it, just having another one to play around with is worth it. It was worth it. I'd buy more of these if I if I saw them loose, like incomplete. I'd probably still buy them. <laughs> His leg is magnetic. I bet these like kids back in the day probably just lost all the parts. Uh, okay. I guess I guess I would be a little offended if you miss me out for that movie. <laughs> I don't know how good it is. <laughs> Unless it's like the most epic movie of all time. Oh, crap. No, his missile's in there. Oh, it's complete. Hey, Jets Mess. Oh, wow. Okay, I thought he was incomplete. He is complete. Oh, that is sweet. All right, let's 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 lose it now. Oh, yeah. All right, all right, all right. Go and lose that missile. That one really, if that's the kind that would hurt a kid, I think. That one just really fires. Okay, we'll just have him on the side here. Such a cool action figure. Absolutely love this figure. Micronauts were such cool figures back in the day. Okay, I, now now I kind of understand, Jason, why you said you might switch between uh, watching the movie and the stream. <laughs> okay, so uh, I went through the... She had a lot of early 90s stuff. Early 90s stuff is not that exciting for me. So it's... Uh, I know, it's a beautiful figure. And, uh, but so we looked, I saw this, I told her this was the only book I saw of value in the stack. Yeah. I'm not going to shoot it into a child's mouth. That's for sure. Uh, I offered her five bucks for it. Just a really beautiful Brian Boland, Wonder Woman cover. Five bucks is, I, I think it's about a $10 book. And then these two, I gave her $2 a piece. It's, uh, the condition is really poor on this though, but why not? $2 for a Flintstones number 36. And uh, two bucks for Monsters of Filmland number 61. Both in kind of low grade, but I wanted to buy something since she gave me the opportunity to kind of look through it. So I was really happy. But getting this figure for 40 bucks, that's the real value right there. That thing is freaking amazing. And I'm pretty sure it's complete. Although, well, it has this here where it looks like there, there might have been three missiles at some point. 
now that I look at it, because I don't think these red tips would fit on there. Me, no, I don't think they have. So there might have been three minutes missiles. I'm not sure. I'm just happy to have one missile so it's complete enough and not, uh, you know, feeling like it's missing parts. And there's two extra hands. I don't know if it originally came with the extra set of hands. That, I'm not sure. That thing is freaking dope. Okay, I wanna get into the things, but I also, I think Sean really, really wants to see uh, my reaction to this stuff. It was, it was really, really funny. If you guys were watching my pop walks, I told the story. So yesterday, I, um, I was supposed to meet up with this woman at 11.30, but my sleep schedule was not ready to wake up at 3.30, so I tried to get myself to sleep the night before, and uh, I was just tossing and turning. I did not sleep very well. And then in the morning, I think I woke up. I was having a dream about New York Comic Con, and I woke up thinking I missed Toy Fair. I think Jason might have woken me up. I'm not 100% sure, but Jason basically told me in the morning that... Um, uh, don't miss out on the Brooklyn Invasion. I was like, oh, man, I don't want to miss that out. But then I realized the Brooklyn Invasion was today, not yesterday. So I didn't miss out. So I was like, oh, I sent Jason. Don't miss it out. Uh, but then I, he said that, oh, then he might go to the um, the Midtown Warehouse or Outlet Store. So I was like, okay, that's cool. Hey, KJ. So then Sean um, messages me like... a you know, I went to the sale, I picked up this stuff, and then Sean messaged me at like 2 p.m. He was obviously there, and he started showing me comics. Then he shows me a picture of him and Jason. <laughs> so obviously, Jason, I think Sean and Jason are friends now, pretty much. <laughs> so we're there, and then like, uh, Jason found a stack of manga that I would really, really want. I was like, oh man, stop showing me stuff. Or no, I called up Jason's phone to talk to Sean because I thought that'd be funny. And uh, so, but then Jason showed me a stack of manga books. I'm like, oh, those are really cool. I was like, yeah, buy them all for me. It was like 12 books. I was like, I don't show me anymore. I'm going to end up making you buy a long box. I hung up the phone and then I started thinking for like 10 minutes, I kind of want a long box. So I was like, I was like, ah, oh, do I ask Sean? But Sean usually has a limited budget on him. I thought Jason might have a credit card or enough cash on him that maybe he could buy me a long box worth. And so I was like, Jason, I don't know if you can do this, but would you like to put a long box together for me? And, uh, you know, you pick it out. And I said I would pay for his books that he was picking out because I figured he was probably picking out between like 30 and 50 books or so. That's kind of Jason's budget usually when he's picking out cheap books. And um, so I said I'd pay for his books and I'd pay for the Uber to get me the box to my place and jason's like oh sure so i told sean to help him as well so sean and jason pulled out a whole long box it was a 50 cent a book sale so the prices were absolutely amazing um i think it ended up when i paid for jason ended up picking out i think 66 books so it cost me 33 dollars for jason's books and 30 dollars for the uber so overall i think it ended up costing me like 74 cents a uh, comic hey ralph oh hey brian so 74 cents, I still think is a really, really good deal on all these. So 74 cents, and uh, I tried to try to, on camera to pick out some stuff, but it was a little bit too difficult. So I had to trust that Sean and Jason could pick out stuff that they thought I would want. So it's like sort of a blind box. I think I know about 30 of the books in the box, but for the most part, this is a blind box. I will show you. I'm going to, uh, I probably won't, uh, uh, um, yeah, maybe she's she's like <laughs> maybe I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, this is the long box they picked out for me, and like I I'm really really excited. And hi Ryan, I like your joke. It made me laugh. Uh, okay, so uh, I should I told Sean I'd be here at nine. Hopefully he shows up because I don't want to. Because Sean was being funny. He's being very competitive. He's like you're going to know which books he picked out. <laughs> you're nervous because you think it... no. Here's the thing. Jason, it's a win-win-win for everyone. You know why? Because I'm going to have a ton of fun. Even if you guys picked out absolute trash, which I don't... I think you both know me enough that you pick out things you think I'd like. I don't care. It was cheap. It was it was $240. I'm making a video for you guys. This is probably one of the cheapest videos I've ever done for the fact that I'm, I'm regularly doing videos where I spend like two grand. So for me, just having a really amazing amount of comics for... The fun of showing you guys for a relatively affordable price. This is perfect. I'm excited. It doesn't matter how bad or how good it is. I uh, just the fun is why we're we're doing it. And I'm I'm picking out a handful just to start. I might show a couple eBay things before. Uh, just I don't know where Sean is. Sean, get here. Get here, Sean. 
That's all right. Uh, we can, uh, oh, the other fun thing was when I was going through that stuff at the garage sale, I found this. I was like, oh, I love Ziggy. And so because I helped them kind of price out a bunch of stuff, she gave me the Ziggy for free. So even though I have them already, it's always fun to find a Ziggy at garage sale. I haven't done that in years. So that was actually really exciting. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to do a handful, and then maybe I'll do a... Uh, a couple of orders for oh yeah you know what before i do this i'm gonna give sean 10 more minutes i actually have a bag of graphic novels i bought so after the garage sale uh i was going to go to comic station and on the way i noticed that the local uh library had a dollar sale right a dollar a book sale so i went in and they're like oh yeah we have a whole bunch of graphic novels so i kind of wiped out all their indie graphic novels I don't really grab Marvel and DC stuff because it kind of bores me. or I'm not as interested in that. So usually what I do is I'll grab kind of interesting indie stuff. So uh, for a dollar a book, basically. Let me show you what I got. Ooh. So I've been meaning to get the trades for Radiant Black. You know, I love cool like sci-fi type stuff. Sci-fi hero. So that was really fun for a dollar. I actually really wanted yeah, someone mess messaged the other Sean. We need to get him here. Does anyone know uh, the other Sean's uh, Instagram? Or All right, let me go through this stack, and then I will message him. <laughs> so we got Radiant Black for a dollar. That was amazing. Uh, I wasn't sure if I had a copy of uh, Descender. I think I do, but for a dollar, I just grabbed it because Descender is also really cool. And, uh, you know, most of these are in pretty good shape, too. They're not, like, covered in library stuff. It's probably just donated stuff. Uh, we got the 11 NINN. I'm not sure what this is, but it looked really fun and funky. Uh, oh, oh, you picked that up today as well? Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably worth picking up the read, honestly. Right? So $3 would have been a score. So a dollar is amazing. So we have this new anthology or new comics anthology. I thought it just looked really cool. It has lots of different fun... Uh, indie artwork like i just love stuff like this just for the artwork like i don't know how good oh i can't show that guy's taking a dump um i don't know like how good the read is but i just love weird kind of different artwork so for a dollar i'd pick that up and then i picked up ancestor i just thought that was a really cool looking cover uh again a dollar it's a sci-fi kind of and it, i mean interior looks really cool actually so yeah, anytime I can pick up stuff like this for a dollar, that's the kind of stuff I actually are more interested to read. So at a buck, I mean, that's amazing. And then we got um, Brooklyn's Last Secret. I thought this looked really cute, like a really cutesy, uh, I don't know, just the style and the artwork, everything about it was just kind of unique and fun. So I thought that was really cool. And then I got uh, Berlin City of Stones from Jason Lutz, book one. So I do like... This kind of, um, you know, historic storytelling kind of stuff. So I thought this looked like a really cool... Uh, I guess it's World War II, I'm assuming. So I thought that was really neat. And then I uh, got... Oh, oh, maybe I... You know what? I paid $9, but I think I might have got 10 books. Wait, how many are there? 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I got 11. Wow. I thought it was only 10. Three, I mean, 9. 3, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11. Oh, okay. I got a couple for free, actually. Okay, that's uh, that's cool. Maybe we counted wrong. I'm not sure. Oh. Okay, here we go. Okay, it was The War of the Trenches. So we have another interesting-looking World War II book. I do like, uh, his, you know, historical World War II stuff. Uh, the art looked pretty awesome inside. No, World War One. It's a World War One book. Oh, that's really interesting. I don't think I see World War I graphic novel storytelling that often. Uh, such a... Like, I, I couldn't imagine being in that war. That's just, like, such an intense... All right, that was really cool. For a buck, I'll take that. Then we got the Dandy Annual 2021. It looks like, like a French reprint, maybe. Not 100% sure, but I really like the artwork. Uh, okay. Just, it looked really fun and cute. So it's probably like a kid's comic book, but I kind of like these hardback, you know, books like this. I just like the way they look. So I like adding those to my collection when I see them. Uh, this one I just thought looked really cool because it looks like it's a 
bookstore themed one with a, someone who steals books maybe just judging by the cover i have no idea if that's what it is but it looked like just a fun uh just like a basic slice of life kind of story maybe it's not laid out that great it actually looks kind of boring but i love the cover so i grabbed that for a dollar why not and then we got uh summer blonde by adrian tomine i believe i have a few books by them and uh just fun looking just storytelling just traditional you know it's not like a superhero book it's just people just hanging out doing stuff i like stuff like that and then i got a uh, national bestseller the best we could do so i do love graphic novels that almost look like a book just from the outside like something about this just feels special and it's probably a really if it's award-winning book it's probably really really or it's a bestseller no it does say american book award so i feel like that's probably pretty awesome Hey, Michael. All right, do we get uh, Sean yet? Yeah, Tomo and I have a few. They're, they are good. So for a dollar, why not? I'll pick that up all day long. All right, uncontrollable MK. Okay, give me... Um, uh, I'm just telling Sean I'm here. I'm starting without him. <laughs> I know what he wants to watch. Uh, give, I'll go, I'm going to disconnect for one millisecond because I got a message. Okay, I am back. Sorry about that. Okay. Woo, all right, it's fun so far. We're having fun. We have a lot to go through tonight. I also, I have two box, long boxes left over from um, Push Pull Comics and Godzilla Comics that I bought, um, what was that, a month ago that we never got to. So I'll do that at the end because I kind of want to do a long stream tonight. So we'll just, we'll keep going. All right, uh, you know what? I'm going to slow roll. Hello, t uh, uh, let's see. The best we could do are fantastic. Okay, yeah, awesome. And the best we could do. Okay, oh, Lars, I appreciate that. See, Lars, I do pick up this kind of stuff when I see it cheap. I love picking it up. Uh, okay, I'm going to go through. We're going to go really slow through Jason and Sean's stuff. Uh, okay. Right off the bat, I mean, I love Magic the Gathering. I don't have that. So, I also, I told them to pick up Boom stuff because I'm very interested in Boom stuff. Um do other stuff okay but this is what i'm more excited for all right i'm gonna do one small stack one small stack i i think jason you picked that out for me right i feel like jason grabbed that one uh oh this is cool we got journey uh fanographics uh, i mean fanographic books for 50 cents i'd pick those all up all day long that's cool i feel like that's a jason pick jason pick uh oh all right looks like you got me a whole run of journey so 2021 uh 22 okay that's i i only have two or three issues from this series so this is actually a really good pick okay we're good so far we got four issues of journey and a magic book i i feel like that's a jason pick <laughs> okay i'm gonna do other stuff and i'm gonna slowly go through this so i don't take forever to get through them they do look cool all right good job so far i'm really happy with that i mean after all expenses out Oh, is it? Okay, I do like Aardvark Van Ham stuff. So, yeah, that's double, double uh, cool. Yeah, CJC, you know a lot of indie stuff. Uh, okay, I'm going to do... This is a whatnot purchase from Epic Nation. I paid $42.62. Um, so, four books, 40 bucks, so $10 a book. So, I'm going to go through this. Uh, Jason, you picked perfect because that's exactly the kind. I'm looking for Boom Studio stuff. I'm looking for fun indie stuff that I don't have. So I'm actually really happy with both of those. So, so far, thumbs up. <laughs> and even after I paid for your stuff and I calculated, it was like 74 and a half cents each. I'd pick these up for 75 cents each anytime. Like if someone bought them in my shop, I might pay 75 cents. So I'm thrilled with that. Okay, so I got this beautiful uh, Red Sonia double set. That was like 20 bucks plus shipping. Thought that was gorgeous i do love red sonia stuff and then the uh, i think it's the same artist did a vampirella set so those are like ten dollars a piece uh i'm trying not to buy too much on whatnot right now because i'm trying to be a little bit more budget conscious because it's better to buy comics for 75 cents and have a lot of fun for hours on end than a bunch of stuff at ten dollars i run out of cash real quick but I couldn't really resist, and they do really good giveaways. So I was like, you know what? Let me just buy a couple things to do the um, the buyer's giveaway. Uh, I haven't seen him yet. I'm sure he'll be here. Maybe I started early because 9 is a little bit earlier than I normally start. I uh, This morning, I woke up after the uh, the walk. I, saw. I was exhausted. So I think... Um, hey, Reef. 
I think what happened was I walked so much yesterday and I didn't sleep proper that my body just got hammered real hard. So I don't even know what my sleep schedule is at the moment. Uh, okay, this is a free book. I really don't... I couldn't figure out who I want it from. But I won this book from um, Whatnot. So it was a Hellblazer number seven. So that's actually kind of a cool book to win. Yeah, last night I had a lot of fun with the walk. I kept going. I ended up doing 17,000 steps yesterday. <laughs> so I have a, I'm a bit exhausted. But uh, I want to, you know, I might do another walk tonight just to get the steps going again. Because Although it's raining. Uh, okay, let's do a, this is an eBay package. I paid $25 for this book. I think, I don't know if I overpaid based on current values. Oh, all right, we're back. I don't know why the, the focus is so weird like that. I don't know if I overpaid based on the current values. Although it looks like uh, Midtown originally sold it for $25. So I paid the original Midtown price. Midtown usually overcharges a little bit. Oh, there's Reed. Hey, Reed. Tina was just asking where you were at. Look at that. That's awesome. So I paid $25 shipped for this issue. Now, this issue, I think, is super undervalued. It's the Adventure Time Spooktacular number one, the one in 25 variant, the rarest version of this issue. Um, and the reason, I'll show you why I bought it. All right, I'm going to pull it out. All right, so this is um, the first comic book appearance of Steven Universe. And I think this issue, they only printed like something like seven to 10,000. So one to 25, they maybe only printed 400 copies of this variant. It might have been less than that. So I've been trying to pick up these first appearances of all these super popular or cult classic cartoons from about 10 years ago. And so I knew this was uh, something I had to grab. Oh, hey, Martin. Uh, Martin, your stack is slightly bigger. <laughs> Every time I talk to you, I think I'm I'm up one or two more uh, Ravage 2099s for you. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe we should aim for 25 so it's not too overwhelming of a first trade. I feel like 25 might be more within uh, both of our... That way, I, I want to ship enough copies to you so that the shipping... Because the shipping is going to be like 30 bucks for me no matter what. Whether it's one issue or like 30 issues. So I'm trying to get the perfect amount for shipping. Uh, oh. Uh, what do I have here? Oh, oh. Yeah, I think... No, maybe 10 to 12 issues right now. We keep finding them. I know Sean found me a couple the other day. So I suspect Sean has a stack of about four or five for me now. <laughs> okay, so I... um 25... Yeah, 25 is perfect. So I paid 25 for that. And then they... Uh, actually uh, threw that in for free so it was actually kind of a fun little extra one yeah micronauts the comic is great but the the toy line is awesome oh you're giving a complete run of hellblazer that's amazing lars that is you no know, it's not brag at all that's just like an awesome gift that someone gave you that is really cool um, I love the Micronauts toys, though. That's probably why I love the comic books, because as a kid, I didn't have Micronauts, but my friends did. So every time I see them, I just, like, I get such a thrill. So anyway, I this being such a low-print run, first appearance... Oh, hey, Ted. First appearance of um, Steven Universe in comic books. I have a feeling this issue one day will be hundreds... Like, in 10 years, this could be a $500 issue easily. And it, depending on the grade, if, it, if it's nice enough for like a 9.8. Now, it has a little bit of a corner mark right there. So, it may be a 9.6, 9.4. Uh, but still, I think that's an issue that could be worth hundreds of dollars. So, I'm trying to pick them up now while they're still... I'm actually shocked that this has no value. I'm really, really shocked. Or, or very limited value. It doesn't have a premium value. Uh, okay. I have a random pile okay, over here that I just... Uh, it was just a whole pile of these Spider-Man booth mystery packs. Uh, they weren't that great this time. I don't even know why I bought them. I just I missed buying them because I had so much fun. I still bit. I still beat the odds, so I still won more ceiling packs than the normal odds, but it wasn't by much. And I, I end up I didn't like the stuff as much, so I um we'll just we're gonna go through these real quick. I'll do a couple of these. Then I'm gonna grab another handful. Uh, so I paid forty one dollars for this pack. Um. Although that's a beautiful cover. So we had maybe this was an all virgin pack. So 41 for this is actually probably not a bad price. Uh that's a beautiful cover. Okay. Actually, I'm happy with this pack. This is a really, really beautiful covers. So was it five issues? One, two, three, four, five. So I paid eight dollars an issue. That's actually a really good price on the virgins. 
So I feel like I did hit a couple of the virgin packs that kind of make up for the weaker packs. That was a really gorgeous pack. Okay, I'm going to do one more small handful from the long box. I'm going to mix this up so that I'm not... Um, like, th those were actually beautiful books. But I, I don't want to do just one thing. I want to kind of mix it up tonight. So we're going to look. Okay, another handful. Hey, Donald. This is from uh, Sean and uh, Jason putting a mystery box together. Uh, Frankenstein's Monster number 7. That looks pretty cool. Uh, I think that's a Sean pick. I'm guessing Sean picked that one out for me. Uh, Moment of Silence. I'm guessing Sean picked that out because that book has some value. I do have a ton of these, though. And I gave Jason one of these for free. So I think that's a Sean pick. I could be wrong, though. <laughs> Uh, yeah, these are the, the uh, that Spider-Man booth. This one was uh, with Eddie this time. Usually I like SJ's books a little bit better. Uh, I feel like this is a Sean Pick Frankenstein Mobsters. It looks really cool, though. I actually really like those. Uh, Warren Ellis Trees. That's actually a pretty cool series. I don't think I have that one. Uh, that could be Sean. That could be Jason. I'm not sure on that one. I do love Saga, but I have them all. So that's... Uh, not a bad issue, though, because I could put it in my shop for, like, three bucks. I'm actually happy with that. Oh, this looks cool. All right, we have a Scout comic. Nocturne County? I'm not sure what that is, but that looks like a lot of fun. I do like kind of cartoony stuff like this. Jason pick, I think. But I'm really happy with that. Uh, Valor Thunderstorm. Uh, now comic, I think that's maybe a Sean pick. <laughs> I'm not sure, but they're cool. I I'm actually really happy with all these. All these are fantastic picks. They're definitely things I love too, because honestly, Saga is one of my all-time favorite comics. So if I'm going to get a duplicate, Saga is okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to just slow roll this until Sean shows up. Let's do another, uh, Spider-Man booth. I actually, I want to get through all these too, because I need to pull out duplicates to sell them. All right, so this pack I paid 40 bucks for. So again, it was $8 an issue. Uh, this was just a... Oh, that's a cool-looking cover. Oh, maybe maybe these are cooler than I thought. I kind of felt like after I won, I was like, why did I buy those? Yeah, no, you are... Jason, you are correct. I'll pick up any Saga because a dollar is just too cheap on them. So you probably... I, I think that's a mix of you and Sean because I think Sean showed me a picture of at least one of them. Uh, good pick, so I'm happy with all of those. Okay, uh, this cover's really cool. Like, uh, I bought... I don't know how many packs I bought, but I was paying like $40 or $50 a pack times like 30. 20, I don't know. I spent like $1,000. So af after that night, I was like, oh man, I, uh, I I went crazy. But now that I'm looking at them, I'm actually like, I'm happy. This For $8, that's actually not a bad book. Uh, Dark Knight of Steel. So I guess, yeah, these are store exclusives. So eight dollars is, uh, yeah. This is a Kingdom of Canada exclusive. So yeah, eight dollars is below regular retail on those. So that's actually not bad. Uh, I haven't read trees, but I've always wanted to read them. We got Street Fighter. This is though I'm always disappointed when they put these loot crate ones in there because this comic's worthless. It just overproduced. Uh, Red Goblin number one. That's actually a really cool cover. Actually happy with that. Uh, X-Men 75, this was like, eh. I don't like when they put older, cheaper stuff in. That's just not exciting. Uh, this is a super cool Virgin variant, though. I'm not sure what series that is, if it's a Ha Ha or something else. And then we got a Absolute Comic Group Katrina, which is kind of a pretty cover, uh, signed by Benny Powell. So that's actually pretty cool. I'm trying, I want to put all the comics from this series into my collection, but there are, some of them are expensive. Okay, so that was not too bad. A couple of issues, like... Paying $8 a piece getting these two in here, this feels like a kind of a garbage pack. But again, the reason why you buy these is not because of the worst, but because of the best that you can hit. That's why I end up buying a ton of these. Uh, okay, let's do uh, another Adventure Time. <laughs> I gotta just mix these all up left and right. I need Sean to get here because I know Sean is really excited. Okay, we got... Uh... This was uh, $68.99 for two lots. One was $37, one was $32. It's so weird that the focus is weird when I show a box up close for a second. Okay, there we go. Okay, so uh, I think this is $20. So I paid like $3 a book on this lot. 
honestly, these virgin variants are all the ratios. They're like a 1 in 25, 1 in 15, or 1 in 30. $3 a piece is an absolute steal on these because these should have retailed at like 10 to 15. Um, they're just, the demand is not there for them at the moment. But I think they are so undervalued because Adventure Time is eventually going to have like the, the following that loves Adventure Time. They're, it's going to eventually catch on that these comics are rare and they're worth collecting. I think they're worth collecting. I love collecting them. And uh, I knew a bunch of these I needed. So basically, over the years, I've purchased Adventure Time lots. I've always sold duplicates to try to break even so I get all the ones I keep for free. I'm going to do that a lot more. And I'm just going to put all the duplicates into my shop because I really, really want to work on this collection because I have strong uh, fear of missing out right now that a lot of these issues are going to become like $50 in a couple of years. Because look how fucking cool that cover is. I absolutely love that one. Uh, Venture Time. I don't know the number. This is uh, the original series, I think. Again, a Virgin variant. It's probably a 1 in 25, 1 in 30 ratio. Uh, I mean, center. There we go. Center. Again, another Virgin ratio. So $3 a piece feels like such a steal on all these Virgin variants because these are all ratios. 1 in 15, 1 in 25, basically. And uh, just for me, they all have beautiful artwork. Absolutely gorgeous covers. Uh, this is a lower number, I believe. Uh, that's also a lower number. BMO's having an awesome dream. Uh, another copy of this. So I paid 25 for one copy. So basically, I bought one copy for 25 This one might even be in better shape. Like, this one has a couple of very minor marks on the spine. I don't see any marks on the spine. First appearance of Steven Universe. I think this is... Um, yeah, this was a cartoon first. Adventure Time is an amazing cartoon. I absolutely love it. It's worth watching. It's a hey, Nerdscape. It's a um, post-apocalyptic landscape where Finn is one of the last humans left on the planet. So basically, Finn and then his dog, or his friend that's a dog, Jake. Uh, Jake's voiced by um, John... John, oh, I forget his name, but he did the voice of Vendor in Futurama. So he did Jake's voice. Uh, Jake is a shape-shifting dog, but basically the universe is full of demons, devils, vampires, candy people, monsters, creatures. Um, Jake the dog uh, dates this magical unicorn. She's like a flying energy unicorn. Uh, one of the main characters, Marceline, she's a vampire. She has a great story because the main villain was like her adoptive father. But then there's like storyline with her real father. And like it's really epic. Um, and, and I love the music that they play. And then uh, Bubblegum Princess is like a mad scientist that creates an entire universe of uh, candy people. And so I just, it's so much fun. It's like if you like a, uh, yeah, jo Joe DiMaggio. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, I mean, uh, John DiMaggio. Joe DiMaggio is the baseball player. John DiMaggio does Jake's voice. So I love it because I love all the monsters. I love all the, like, there's one episode where the candy people, um, there's a zombie infestation with the candy people. So they all start turning into zombies. And it's absolutely fun and hysterical. Absolutely love it. And then this is uh, the Candy Kingdom series. So again, there's all these candy people that live in that series. Love the candy people. Uh, princess Bubblegum, she is fun. She's like, she's a cute princess, but she's also a mad scientist and she's super smart. So I really like her character. Oh, and they threw in a free Saga book. If you're going to get a free extra book, Saga is amazing. Uh, so that's, I don't know. If, I don't know sure who that is, but it's a rock band. It might be Marceline's band. The candy guy's rocking out. Um, there's the main villain. That's uh, the Ice King. That's the, the Lich. And that's uh, Jake's girlfriend, the, the Rainicorn. Um, hey, Rex. But yeah, I love all the car artwork. And like a lot of the storyline takes place in all these like magical forests. And it's like a Dungeons and Dragons adventure kind of. And then uh, Fiona Cake is the new series. I watched the first two episodes so far. I really, 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 really awesome. Oh, hey, Sean. Uh I, I haven't done your... I've only done a handful of your books. So after this, I'll dig into um, your and Jason's pile. Okay, sweet. Sean's here now. <laughs> He's taking a nap. <laughs> so Fiona and Cake is the new series. I've watched the first two episodes. Absolutely loved them so far. Um, so Fiona and Cake is a complete gender swap version of Adventure Time that the evil Ice King does a fan fiction. So he does a fan fiction where he turns every single character into a gender swap version. And it's it's like super fun. I really like it. So instead of Jake the dog, you have Cake the cat, who's also shape-shifting. So if you have Finn the human, you have Fiona the human. 
So I, uh, I, the reason why I started buying all these is because of the new series. It's now 10 years old. I feel like they're ripe for going up in value. I had to grab these. $3 a piece, I feel like was a steal. Uh, oh, I love that cover. That's a beautiful cover. That's all. See, it's like a, you know, Adventure Time. It's like a Dungeons and Dragons where this big monster is putting treasure there for the adventurers. But it's really just bait. Absolutely love that. Uh, that's a lower number, I think. Uh, I love that cover. That's a beautiful cover. And uh, forget what series that is, but that's an awesome cover. So yeah, Adventure Time. I love Adventure Time. I am going to be buying a lot of Adventure Time until I feel like I have too much. Until then, because the prices are still $3 a book for all those. Um, I'm sure they did use a lot of the artwork because they are beautiful. Okay, we're, are we ready, Sean and Jason? Are we ready for the Sean Jason show? <laughs> I've done a handful of, of picks so far. All right. I'm excited to see what, what's in these piles. Okay, next handful. Uh, ooh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay. Oh, I don't know who would pick that out. Whoever picked that out, though, that's a winner for me in my book. I love turtles, and I don't have a lot of the newer stuff. So 75 cents for that's amazing. Oh, wow, this looks really cool. So we have a boom book, John Flood. I really want to collect all the boom stuff so, just because it's all unique and different and interesting. That's a cool cover. Uh, I'm thinking Jason picked that one out. Uh, Magic Whistle 3.2. I don't know what this is, but it looks awesome. I love the cartooning on it. Wow, that looks cool. Uh, I'm guessing Jason? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Higher Earth, number one. Really awesome Noto cover. Absolutely love that. Boom Studios again. Maybe J. Oh, holy crap. All right, all right. Who found Unbound number... I don't know the number, but that's a Josh... I am in such a Josh Burns kick lately. This is a comic I didn't know about. I'm assuming it would be expensive to buy because all his stuff is expensive or I can't find it cheap. So like, um, that's who gets, who gets a hundred points. That's a hundred point. <laughs> Jason. Okay. Jason, a hundred points for you. <laughs> uh, Archangel eight. That's a cool looking book too. Another really fun indie book. Absolutely love that. Uh, slumber number one. That's a uh, fun. I, again, it's sort of like adventure time. I like, Kind of cartoony, whimsical, fun monster books. That is really cool. And then, uh, am I, am I, am I cursing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I could be. I'm really bad at that. Uh, Big Bang Comics number four. That's pretty cool. Oh, Black Science. I do absolutely love Black Science. I probably have that one okay already, but I know I can get two or three dollars out of that pretty easily. So you know what? That pays for a few. Got a few here that'll pay. Oh, uh, Peter Panzer. Faust. I am putting this set together too slowly out of dollar bins. I don't think I had that one yet. So that one's good. Oh, a couple of those. So one will be for sale. Oh, three of those. <laughs> Duplicates. Okay. Uh, breakdown number one. That looks cool. Not familiar with that. I have a feeling these were all just uh, Jason picks. Hey, Jerry. All right, Jason, you got the first uh, big banger point hit. <laughs> Jason's in the lead. Okay. That was the, the, the uh, Josh Burns book. Cool, like, sexy girls, but in a cool steampunk look. That is a cool book. Uh, oh, all right. This is Sean's pile. I know Sean got these. Uh, we got Pep 251, 15 cent cover. I mean, this is, like, Sean immediately, when I asked Sean to start putting the box together with Jason, Sean immediately just, like, grabbed a stack. He knew what I wanted. So that's our... <laughs> can't help myself if i'm excited i curse a little bit it's a sign of intelligence uh pep 251 that is amazing for 75 cents this is like a wow that cover is cute i absolutely love her top uh yeah that looks in pretty good shape too like only a little bit of wear that's probably like a very fine copy that's for a 15 cent or a 20 cent cover that's amazing pep 232 228 uh batman and scooby-doo mysteries that is super cool now jason i think sean sean i'm gonna give you a point too on that stack i feel like this is something that jason would have grabbed maybe because i know he was in the scooby-doo section this is freaking dope though this is uh i don't think this would be a cheap book to buy online probably like five bucks i'm guessing scooby-doo books are so hard to buy super cheap and you know what bonus points for grabbing scooby-doo because Tina loves Scooby-Doo. So we'll put that there. 
Uh, oh, also, all the cool Looney Tunes. I said I wanted all of those. So, 75 cents each on these are amazing. <laughs> 99 points. <laughs> okay. Uh, these Scooby Doo's are amazing. Oh, this is a super cool Teen Titans Go. These are kind of hard to get cheap as well. Uh, Looney Tunes, 245. Oh, yeah, these are cool. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Uh, those are good. I don't know if I, I'm going to give the big points, but they're definitely uh, very, very desirable. I'm happy with that. Uh, okay. Vampirella Strikes, a Perillo cover. This is amazing. I am trying to buy all the Perillo stuff right now. So this is going to go into... Um, uh, all right. That's going to go into the Jason pile. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you got all the Scooby-Doo. So Jason has two big hits for me, and then Sean has a whole pile of pep. All right. Let's see what we got here. We got a Pep 248. I'm going to have to make you guys compete against each other again because you've done an amazing job grabbing stuff for me so far. And like, this is kind of amazing. <laughs> Pep 248, Pep 246, uh, Pep 247. You know, I might not have a ton of these issues. I might need some of these. Oh, look, and a duplicate so I could get some of my money back. Wow, those are cool. All right, I'm putting that into the cool Sean pile. Okay, next stack. Uh, it's uh, non-backer board, moderns. I'm guessing this is uh, Jason Pyle, possibly. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know who grabbed the most books. Jason might grab the bigger quantity. Uh, these are really cool. I do love these. I don't know what I have, so I would definitely pick these out of a dollar bin any day long or any time I saw them. Uh, Obi-Wan Star Wars is cool. I do like Star Wars variants. It's like either I have it or... It's going to sell really well. I think Sean might have grabbed those. I think these are Sean picks. Uh, Sean gets... I'm not going to put it in the, the super pile, but Sean gets points for picking out Peach Momoko. Even though I think I have these already. Like, I'll buy all the Peach I find for a dollar. Uh, I know it could have been better, Jason. But you know what? So far, this is kind of amazing. Like, Okay, so yeah, this might be all uh, the Sean pick then. Uh, really, really love that. Awesome, um, Grogu cover? That, I'm gonna put that in the cool pile for sure. Uh, bad idea, love bad idea. Uh, more Ninja Turtles? Okay. Uh, we're gonna take a, oh, that cover is gorgeous. I did say pick out any really good, I think Sean might have grabbed that. Sean has this radar for the sexy girl covers. Uh, this is, uh, interior artwork, oh yeah. They do such great interior artwork. Like, I just love the production value on them. I know. Well, I, it's up to... If if Jason is up for grabbing me a long box or two or five in the future, I mean, I, I had so much fun. I mean, I'm having so much fun. I had so much fun just anticipating it. I just love the idea of you guys picking out a box of amazing stuff for me. And, uh, like, so far, this is quite amazing. Yeah, I do, I do, I do kind of can tell because I know uh, Jason would probably pick out more of the indie indie stuff, and you were picking out more of like the other kinds of stuff. This cover is gorgeous. I'm gonna put that in the Sean pile again. That just, I love just the coloring. There's something about the Aspen colorist that always picks such beautiful, vibrant colors, and then like the opalescence of her wings, and just the way her hair is colored. Such a gorgeous color. Like the line artwork composition is kind of boring. She's too centric. Uh, this. She's cropped kind of funny. He's just like a head. So compositionally, I don't know if I like it. But the coloring is what does it for me. The coloring is gorgeous on that. Oh, Amanda Condor of Red. So only at that is cool. Yeah, that's that's showing, I think. <laughs> I could put that in the, the cool pile. Uh, but see, I feel like this is a Jason pick. It's got to be. Uh, epic and Anthology. Oh, I, I'm, oh, no, I'm putting that in the show pile. <laughs> Epic and I, wow, that is that is kind of awesome at looking actually. I'm gonna put that in the cool pile for Jason. <laughs> uh, higher Earth Boom again. I'm looking for Boom stuff, so I'm actually really happy with that. Uh, duplicate of that one. Ooh, Power Rangers number one Boom Studios. That's gotta have some value. Someone look up Power Rangers number one from Boom Studios. Uh, I mean, it's a 2016, so it's maybe newer, but I have a feeling that's a five to ten dollar. But I'm gonna put that in the good pile. Figuring out that's Jason. Uh, Deadpool. Deadpool's always in demand. I um, I don't think I have the issue, so I'll be keeping it. But honestly, I'd pick out all the Deadpool I see out of a dollar bin. Uh, okay, we got uh, Aspen Comics Legacy. Another beautiful... Uh, just the coloring is gorgeous. Michael Turner artwork. All right, I'll go put... Uh, I'm... 
Is that a Jason or is that a Sean? I feel like that's a Sean. <laughs> I don't know. All right, this is fun. This is really, really fun. Oh, and we're only like a small handful. We've only done like 5% of the box. This is going to be a very, very fun video, I think. Uh, okay, we're back to Looney Tunes. I know Jason grabbed all these for me. So these are Jason picks. Uh, these are great picks, too, because these books are shorter printed. Um, they're kids' books, so they probably get damaged. So these are kind of hard books to get cheap. Ooh! Adventure Time. Who grabbed Adventure Time? Who grabbed Adventure Time? Adventure Time is going to go into their pile because I, I have a feeling that, uh, I mean, you guys know I'm going crazy on Adventure Time right now. Uh, Something's Killing the Children. That's always a good book to pick up. Ooh, that's a beautiful Vampirella book. Is that a Sean pick? I feel like that's a Sean. No, but it's all mixed in with, maybe you guys were mixing it up. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure at all. Uh, okay, Scooby-Doo 105. Oh, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ghostbusters. I think that's like a 5 to $10 book. That's pretty cool. Thomas Alsop, another cool boom book. Uh, Jason, okay, that goes into the cool Jason pile. There we go. Jason's getting the points. <laughs> uh, Plan of the Apes, Boone, that is awesome. Oh, wow, that cover is gorgeous. Return to Whisper, number two and three. I really like the way she looks. I love the color. I got to look at this one. I'm going to, uh, I know, I know you guys have to grab whatever Scooby you see just for Tina because Tina needs to see Scooby in every video. Uh, interior artwork, not as exciting. Like it looks kind of like meh, meh to me. It's not terrible, but it's not great. But that cover is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely love the cover. Yeah, $10 book. I thought it had some value to it. Okay, I, uh, I really like this book. I think... Is that a Jason pick? I feel like that's a Jason pick. Uh, Lost in Space mashup with Alice in Wonderland. That's amazing. Uh, more line, Lost in Space is great because I have a good friend that loves Lost. I, I'm going to keep these. But anytime I get duplicates, I get them for him. Yeah, it's all mixed. I figure it's all because you had a box. You They had a long box that they just started filling it up and throwing them in there. Because I didn't want them to take longer. I think it took them about an hour to put the box together. And so far, I think they did a fantastic job. Uh, more Boom. Again, I want to put a full set of all the Boom books together just because I love the artwork. It's just a little bit different. I love that it's alternate stories. It's not just superhero stuff. I'm very interested in all the Boom Studio stuff. Um, let's see. We have a beautiful Archie number seven. Love that cover. Oh, Vampirella Strikes. Uh, not sure the artist. I'm going to put that in... I think that's a Sean pile. I think that's a Sean pile. I'm pretty sure that's a Sean pile. Uh, lock and key number one. The um, In Battalion Go. I'm not sure if this is the second or third series, but that is really cool. That's got to go. Who picked that out? That's got to go into the... Ah, oh, this one is dope too. So it looks like a John Carter Warlord of Mars Peanuts mashup. How cool is that? That's fucking cool. That's got to go into the... I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I can keep track anymore. Hey, Nicholas. <laughs> I think both of you guys win. You guys win because you both grab such amazing stuff. Uh, Scarlet Witch, number six. Love the colors on that cover. Uh, Miles Morales, number eight. A fun homage to uh, Amazing Spider-Man 238. Love that. Oh, wow. This box is... This is the, the gift that keeps giving. This box is amazing. Absolutely loving this box. Uh, oh, more Scooby-Doo. Look at that. I'm actually really happy with these Scooby-Doo's because Scooby-Doo is not an easy book to find cheap. Scooby-Doo 112. Uh, Archie with Katie Keene. That is awesome. Uh, oh, a fun Popeye IDW book. That is really cool. That's, I think, a 5 to 10 Both of these, I think, are 5 to $10 books. Um, Vampirella Lives, number two. It says Connor. It doesn't look like traditional Amanda Connor artwork. Not 100% sure, but that is awesome. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'll go put that in the Sean pile. <laughs> Sean needs his recognition. <laughs> uh, Power Rangers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's an amazing book. That's got to be a $5 to $10 book. I'd like, I don't even know why they put stuff like that in the dollar bin. It's like they're giving it away. Uh, Back to the Future, number one. That's an amazing book. That is super cool. Uh, oh, a fun Johnny Quest, number four really like that book uh oh this is a cool archie really like that one i don't think i've seen that one before uh beautiful dan parent archie uh i don't know sometimes these dan parent variants are actually quite valuable the popeye was definitely showing okay 
How about, uh, okay. I don't know who's what. <laughs> I think this is a show and pile right here. Uh, go put that in the show and pile though, because I f have a feeling that one might be worth something. Actually, someone look that up if that's one of those like 20 to $30 Archies or not. Uh, Vampirella lives. I, I'm not as big of a cosplay cover for Vampirella. I just, I don't like them that much. So I, uh, I'm going to give you minus a point, Sean. <laughs> just joking. <laughs> hey, Big B, how are you? Uh, okay, we got uh, Archie and Katie Keen, though. I kind of want to start collecting more of the modern Katie Keen stuff because I'm almost done with the Golden Age. I do need to get the modern stuff. Uh, the Archie's one shot, that's really cool. All right, that's really awesome. Okay, I, uh, all right, I'll move these out of the way. Move them out of the way. Uh, you know, I should probably grab an empty long box so these don't get mixed up. Or, I mean, they could get mixed up, but I, they don't start falling all over. Uh, okay, we still have a... T wow, you guys have done such an amazing job. I just, so far, there hasn't been anything that I'm absolutely like, why did you grab that for me? I feel like everything has been just spectacular. And I really can't believe they had this stuff out for 50 cents. Pep 251 uh pep 254 fun ice skating cover pep 263 like 50 cents a piece you can't find that on ebay for 50 cents these would go on a lot for like one to three dollars a piece 249 uh 264 those are awesome i'm gonna put those all into the sean pile the sean rules pile uh scooby-doo is amazing i should probably put these in the jason rules pile uh Oh, that is a cool Darkwing Duck Virgin. Variant. Jason, you pull that one out? I feel like that's a Jason pick. That's going to go into the Jason rules pile because that thing is cool. Virgin variant, Darkwing Duck. I have a feeling that has some value. Teen Titans Go is always fun. Scooby-Doo. Uh, Archie 21. Archie and Friends. That's fun. Uh, I'm going to put these into the... Um, I think Jason grabbed... No, Jason, you grab these for me. I think Jason grabbed these. I like grabbing these Cartoon Network books for the same reason why I'm grabbing Adventure Time is a lot of them are early appearances of all the Cartoon Network characters. So I like grabbing them because I feel like the nostalgic is going to kick in on those. Uh, let's see. We have Grim Fairy Tales 115. Sword in the Stone. Looney Tunes 261. Uh, Scooby-Doo 99. Looney Tunes 262. So a couple of duplicates. Duplicates are okay if it's cheap and awesome stuff. Uh, I'm going to grab one long box. Uh, yeah, let me grab a long box because these are going to start falling all over. Give me one second. Okay, I grabbed the long box. Ouch. Keep hitting my head. I hit my head really hard. Earlier today, that hurts. Now I just hit my head on the light. <laughs> if I go unconscious, it's because I'm smashing my head everywhere. Uh, so all these books came from... There's a store... Uh, the Midtown Comics has an outlet store in Queens where every few weeks they have a big sale. So all their dollar books are 50 cents or, or like if you spend $300, you get 60% off. That kind of thing. So both my friend... Um, Jason, my friend Jason mentioned it in the morning, and then my friend Sean is there every weekend, and he messaged me when he got there. And then he sent me a picture of Jason at the place. So because of that, I just like I was getting a little jealous, and then I was like, "Oh man, Jason, do you wanna? Are you willing to put a box together?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah." He, he thought about it. He's like, "Yeah, I could do that." So, ba uh, Jason and Sean put this long box together for me. I paid for the sixty or so books that Jason and I paid for um, his Uber cost, and I owe Sean a lunch. So it, it cost me, end up, after every expense, it's going to cost me about 75 cents a book, which I feel like is fantastic, because so far, I'm not seeing anything that's just, like, an awful buy. Like, these Archies, these would sell in my shop, especially, like, the Silver Age ones, 3 to $6 all day long. I can't keep the older ones in stock. So this is, I'm going to look, I'm going to see which ones I need, so if I need them, I'm keeping them. But if they're duplicates, then I'll sell them. So I just like, there's a lot of really good value in these ones. And these were all Sean. Sean immediately grabbed the whole handful for me when uh, I asked. Um, okay. Let's go in the awesome Sean pile. Uh, Vampirella Strikes. That's cool. I do love my vampy books. Uh, I'm 100% sure Jason grabbed that for me because he knows I love all the weird, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Elf Quest related stuff. So that is super cool. I'd pick that up in a heartbeat for 75 cents. I'd pick it up for a dollar because I've picked up others. 
Ooh, Scooby Apocalypse. Okay, this series is quite collectible. I think these go for five to ten bucks. So that is super awesome. Oh, we got a couple of those. Those are really awesome, actually. Uh, oh, oh, so this is the stack that uh, I know it's a great deal. And it's like just so awesome that my friends help me out and just everything about this box of comics. This is why I love comics. All of it. I love the comics themselves. I love uh, collecting with my friends. I love sharing them with you guys. I love sharing a lot of books with you guys. I love just everything about this box just represents everything I love about comic books. So it's amazing. Uh, so this is the stack that they should like. I call it what is funny is so Sean sent me a picture of him, like a selfie with him and Jason. And then because of that selfie, I called Jason's phone to talk to Sean. And uh, because I know Sean, I couldn't direct, I have to FaceTime him and it like doesn't work as well. So I called uh, Jason's phone to talk to Sean because I thought it'd be funny. And then like immediately, uh, Jason pulls, I think it was this book or another one of these books, these Outlanders, because he knows I like it. And uh, I was like, oh, all right, yeah, I want to get, get that for me. And then he had a whole stack of like eight of them. That's a really cute, sexy cover. I Like, these are amazing. I love this stuff. So, and then he shows me this one, and I'm just like, I was basically like, uh, don't, all right, don't show me anymore because I'm going to want a long box. But then the thought of me getting a long box kind of like squirreled, its, it, it wormed its way into my brain. And so I just, I had to ask Jason, I'm like, Jason, would you want to put together a long box? I'll treat you for the books you're picking out. And, oh, that's a big, thick issue too. Moon Knight 25, that is a cool issue. Uh, so basically he said, yeah, sure. I think he, I think both Sean and Jason, you guys had fun. I'm pretty sure they had fun. Oh, and this is the other one. They had a whole stack of the Fist of North Star, which I absolutely love these two. The artwork is fantastic. And so this is what started it off. And then today Sean started showing me more. He went back. He started showing me more 80s manga. I'm going to have to try to get these guys to fill up a box for me again in the future. Because this is just like... This is fantastic. I'm having so much fun. I love Fist of the North Star. Super cool manga. Okay, so I was happy to get that. Uh, more of the Outlanders. It might have just been number one that they showed me. And I know I have a couple of them, so there's a, probably a couple of these that will be duplicates. But I was like, just grab them all. Just grab them because I didn't even want to think about it. 75 cents, grab them all, figure out the duplicates later. Because honestly, I don't... I have enough budget to buy a lot of comics. So at 75 cents a piece, it's okay to have duplicates because it's I'm doing it for the fun of it. Oh, you have the hardcovers. That is awesome. I should try to get the hardcovers. Honestly, right now, I want to read a lot more manga. Um, and I want to... Um, uh, like, if you guys have any really good manga recommendations... I know Lars gave me a bunch of recommendations. A few other people gave me recommendations while walking last night. After the stream is over, I... Um, Leave a comment about what manga you think I should read just in the, the comments afterwards so that I can look them up. And like, I want to start buying one or two weeks to actually read them. So I just, I absolutely love it. And they could be new manga, they could be old manga. It just, manga in general, I find just to be an easier read. So I really enjoy Wow, these are so fucking cool. I'm sorry. I can't help myself. <laughs> I'm having too much fun. My, my language, this is not child friendly tonight. <laughs> Yeah, no, Sean does not hate comics. He is constantly hunting for comics. Like, probably like five, seven, eight days. The only time he stopped, uh, he was dating. He was on, going on a bunch of dates for a couple of weeks. It kind of slowed him down. But I think he still went comic hunting a few days. Uh, Cluster, Weavers. Uh, yeah, this Boom stuff. I love this stuff because it's just unique and different. And I just don't see it as all. Oh, this is super cool. I don't think I have this. Okay, that's sweet. I'm trying to finish my first collection. I think I have two or three hundred more I need. So I'm actually really happy to see a first book that I think I need. Uh, I'm sure that's a Jason pick. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. Okay, all right. Uh, let me move these out of the way. Oops, my books are falling over. Oh, sweet. So you got 100 more books from just today's. I need to start going. I got to figure out how to comfortably use uh, um, Uber. No dating. Yeah. Dating gets in the way of comic buying. I can tell. Sean had to cut down. Oh, another Adventure Time. Man, that's also Even if I have it, I'm pretty sure I have it already. But I just I want to get as many of these as I can. I want to. I'm trying to make a giant Adventure Time section inside my um, store, and I'm trying to keep all the key issues. Wow, that's super cool. 
Let's go ahead and go in there. Uh, Outlander, book four. Oh, man, these are cool. I really like these. Outlander. Oh, more Fist of the North Star. Wow. Honestly, if you guys... I'm, I, I'm looking for this cool uh, 80s reprint. So if it's a Viz or the Dark Horse manga, any of this stuff, this is what I really, really want right now. And these are absolutely fantastic. Wow, these are so cool. Uh, number six. I think I have a few of the uh, actual Japanese original volumes. And then uh, I don't know how many of these Viz reprints I have, but those are fantastic. Love them. Okay, da -da -da. okay let's... Uh... Oh, and then this is one last comic that uh, Jason pulled out after he filled the box. He's like, oh, there's one more. I got to grab for some. That's actually quite a beautiful cover. Love that one. I'm going to put that in the cool pile. Okay, we're a third of the way through the box. This box is a box that just keeps going. I absolutely love this. I love the idea of just filling up a box like this on a weekly basis. I'm going to have to really, really try to get there. Uh, oh, this is dope. A Bernie Wrightson book? That is cool. I bet Jason grabbed that one for me. Uh, oh, a Vampy book. That is fun. I feel like that's a Sean pick. Uh, more Vampy books. That is fun. More Vampy books. That is fun. Uh, oh, we got a DC. You guys bought me a DC book. <laughs> it's a cool looking DC book, though. Uh, that's shocking, though. Shocking. I don't really go on my way for uh, superhero stuff. <laughs> we got. Oh, that's a. Is that? No, just a thick issue. Scooby Doo. That's apps. Oh, I love that Batman is on the cover with them. That's actually awesome. Oh, this is um. Bjorn. Bjorn is that a Bjorn cover? I like his artwork. That's a really cool alien cover. Love that. Uh, Catwoman, number 52, beautiful David Nakayama cover. Another Bjorn cover. Wow, that is gorgeous. I haven't seen those before. Uh, ooh, okay, who picked that one out? Oh, Sean got it. Okay. Okay, Sean. Sean wins on the Bernie Racing. Who who found me this beautiful Ironheart Derek Chu Virgin variant? I've never seen that before. I love Derek Chu stuff and the Virgin variant. It's probably semi-rare, I'm assuming. That one's cool. I, I want to know who pilot put that in. Uh, Teen Titans Go. Those are fun. Oh, Scooby Doo with the Abominable Snowman. That's awesome. Do love um, you know Bigfoot and Snowman. So that's like a double point book. Uh, Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo. Those are amazing. More Looney Tunes. Man, I the amount of stuff they had of this quality for fifty cents kind of blows my mind. How much they give away. I think there's a lot of comic dealers that go here looking for this stuff because this stuff's amazing. Uh, Batman, Scooby-Doo Mysteries. That's a fun Poison Ivy cover. I'm going to put that in the, the awesome pile. I'm pretty sure that was uh, Ironheart. Okay. Scooby-Doo, I think, is you, Jason. Ironheart's going in the Sean pile. Sean, that was, a, to me, I think that is a really good pick. Uh, Ultimate Spider-Man number 11. I actually did like this cartoon when my son was young. So that's actually really cool. I do like the cartoony stuff, too, because it's kind of hard to... Um, it's going to be hard to get it in the long run. Just for the... Um, you know, it's the kind of thing that uh, kids are going to just beat the crap out of. Okay, let's move those. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty sure that one was was you. Pretty sure. Okay, we got... Uh, oh, but you got me more cosplayer covers. <laughs> Mine is a point. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't like the cosplay covers. I don't know. They're, I'm just not a big fan of those. Uh, oh, plus a point, though. This one's really cool. I like that one. Uh, oh, that one's really cool, too. Who's the artist on that? Ah, sure. It looks very familiar, but I love the cover on that one. Oh, that Johnny Quest is really cool. Uh, duplicate on that. Uh, Air Fighters Classic. I do like these because these reprint the original um, Golden Age Air Fighters, so that's actually really cool. Uh, Death Rattle. Wow, that is a cool cover. I don't know what that is. I really like that. Is that a, a pick? your pick, Jason? I feel like that's a Jason pick. I'm going to see who picked that out. Because I'm going to give points on that one. That one is super cool. Robotech. Do love Robotech. Robotech's cool. Uh, more of the... Um, no, this is a regular Airboy. So this is the um, 90s series. Or no, 80s series. That is really cool. Do like that. Eclipse. I really want to put together a full run of all the Eclipse books too. And I only have maybe three short boxes. So I probably have another like 600 I got to dig up. So at 50 cents, 75 cents a piece. Ah, $400 later, I'll have a set. I just have to find them. Uh, Evil Ernie is cool. Oh, wow. Okay, Bernie Wrightson, Master of the uh, Macabre. Uh, number three, that, that's a... Uh, okay, 
that's that. I think this is a Sean uh, Frank Frazetta. That is a really cool. Not the best uh, reprint on the cover, though. I don't. Some of the Frank Frazetta stuff they reprinted, they would take a random panel, and it doesn't look that great. I don't know why they did that. It was just like a cheap cash in. Still a super awesome book, though. I love Frank Frazetta. Those are super cool. Uh, okay, I gotta move those. Honestly, I both of you guys did a fantastic job. I don't want to really rate one over the other. You both were amazing. Uh, ooh, Scout War Shaman number one. That's an awesome cover. I think... Uh, I, I still owe stuff to Ranji, and I think he's either looking for one or two. I have to double-check that. Uh, Sword of Texas, more Eclipse. That's awesome. I don't think I had that one yet. Oh, New America. I don't think I have that. All right, these are fantastic because I don't have uh, a bunch of these. Okay, I don't think I have that either. Okay, sweet, sweet, sweet. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, hey, Ian. Um, Scout Handbook. That is awesome. Uh, Vampy 2. Uh, Green Arrow, Lenticular. I'm not a huge fan of some of these. I love Lenticulars, but some of them... I guess this one's a little bit better than the Marvel ones. But, uh, you know, I could put that in my shop for $3. So, 75 cents was great. Uh, Weird War Tales, that's a fantastic cover. Absolutely love that. Oh, that's a fantastic cover, too. Those are really cool. I don't think I have those. Uh, oh, is that Mark Gandalfo? I did not know she did this series. I think that's Mark Gandalfo from 2013. So, an older book of hers. Who found that one? Because that, to me, I love Mark and Delfo. So I'm going to, I think that's, I'm pretty sure that's her. And I'm going to put that in the cool pile because I've never seen that before. I know Bernie Wrights on this fantastic. I just love all the, um, you know, just the, the details and the line work and stuff. It's gorgeous. Which, it's weird to me. Like they, so that's a reprint of Bernie Wrights and stuff. I think compared to, oh, I moved already. Compared to Frazetta, like they took such an awesome image right there. Oh, really? The first Charles Burns story. All right, that's awesome, Lars. Uh, Swords of Sorrow, number three. A uh, J.N. Nicoletto cover. That is really cool. And a uh, Swords of Sorrow, number six. That sort of has a Jenny Friesen look to it, but I don't think it's Jenny Friesen. Oh, the, I haven't seen these before. These are actually quite cool. And Sword of Sorrow, number five. I'm going to see who the artist is. We're, okay, Sean, you're going to get points for that Mark Andalfo because that's kind of amazing. I love her artwork. I'm trying to get everything she's done. And I've never seen that before. So that is awesome. Well, I really like this cover, though. I'm trying to figure... Oh, the interior is kind of awesome, too. Cover C by Robert Heck. So I'm not familiar. Or cover B is... Uh, or No, it might be the Tula Lote if it's cover A. Not 100% sure it might be Lote. The interior artwork's really pretty, though. Like, it looks almost like um, color pencil, or it doesn't look as digital. Wow, that is awesome. Absolutely love that. Okay, you 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 were talking up the um, the Bernie Wrightson, so we're going to open it up. we got to take a second to... Uh... Uh, I, I'm bad at pronouncing anything, so I don't even know which one we're... Uh, I mean, I've heard it, the macabre. And, uh, but, but um, when I'm just reading it and not thinking, so the, oh, Masters of the Macabre. You're saying that's the proper way. Yeah, I, I say things wrong. That's okay. That's just how my brain works. Uh, oh, wow. The coloring is fantastic inside this. Oh, it really does the line work justice because it doesn't overwhelm the lines, but it adds, it's, I feel like they almost use like a watercolor or like a, what do you call it? Gouache? Gouache? Oh, and then this one, this one not as nicely colored. It looks a little bit more washed out, but it still looks pretty cool. That one looks more watercolor. Oh, wow. This is gorgeous, though. What a beautiful book. You guys bought me some treasure. Oh, and it's got the Dave Stevens back cover. Man, you guys bought me treasure. Treasure. Love it. Okay, next stack. Let's find the next stack. Well, we are about halfway through the box. This box has been absolutely fantastic. I, this is better stuff than I've been picking out myself. <laughs> you guys rock. Wow, that scout cover. I love the artwork on all these scout covers. This cover, though, I, I'm a sucker for like a survivalist with a mask on. I think this one is fantastic. That is so cool. Uh, scout War Shaman number six. Number five. All right, these are fantastic, too, because I think I need a bunch of them. I know I don't have any of these uh, New America, so those are super fun. Really like those. Scout number four is amazing. 
Uh, Sword of Texas. I don't think I have that. Uh, oh, you know what? This is the one I think I need for Ranji. So that's good. I actually needed that one. Yeah, it's the macabre. Macabre. I'm like when I'm reading it, it just because of the way it is uh, written. I just I can't pronounce it properly because my brain it takes there's too much translation times between reading it, thinking about it, and finding out the um, actual. All right, those are really cool. I really really like the scout issues. Uh, Captain Adam Forty Two. I probably still have it floating around. I'm pretty sure I um. Oh yeah, I have it on top of the, the DC box. No, 44. I don't have 42. Sorry. Mix it up. Mix it up. I know I want to let other people shop for me more. Uh, Sean has been trying to get me to go to this store for about six months to a year now. And I'm just usually too busy to take the trip because it's about a 45-minute subway ride. Maybe a two-hour walk. Um, the scout stuff was a joint decision. Okay, well, that was a that was a very good joint decision. Because I, like I said, I really want to put together all the Eclipse runs. And I love, like, post-apocalyptic survival kind of stuff, which this feels like it is. And so I just, I feel like this is a comic I would have. I probably would love reading. I love the covers already, but I feel like I would uh, read it. So I just, I love these. These are fantastic. Absolutely awesome. Like, look how cool the covers are. Yeah, Eclipse has so many beauty. What I like about it is the artwork's gorgeous. The production quality is high. And like what you this was $2 cover price. So that seems like a really high price for the time. No, I appreciate it. It was it was so much fun. Uh yeah, 1988. So at the time comics were about a dollar, I think. So they were charging double the cover prices, Marvel and DC. But the production quality is just like the paper quality is nice, the coloring is fantastic, the line works nice. To me, this book is just a joy to flip through. So I just it's so much nicer than Marvel stuff. So I really I like Eclipse stuff because it gives me something a little bit different off the beaten path, different than the Marvel and DC superhero stuff. And I just I love sci-fi tales, uh, true to life tales, crime dramas. Things are a little bit different than the beaten path. So these are fantastic. Absolutely love those. And that's why I'm trying to put together a full run of all the first books and all the Eclipse books. Because I just, I love indies like that. And that's also why I asked them to buy me uh, Boom books. Because I like Boom for modern indies. I think they do a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, Alien Gagged. I don't know what that is, but it's very interesting. Really interesting indie. Uh, oh, I think Sean found these. Evader Zim. I will always grab Evader Zim. I don't know what this is. But it looks amazing. It's Mulp. Mulp, Scepter of the Sun. You got these two, uh, three street candy pirates with like a bumblebee uh, drawn. That I got to look at this. This looks amazing. I've never seen this before. Who picked out Mulp? Who gets the points for Mulp? Because I'm going to put this in the I've never seen it before and it's amazing pile. No, no, I'm, 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 I was, wow. The interiors is amazing on this too. This book, this book is a joy. Wow, even the splash page, even the like the design sketches, this is like a under the radar work of art right there. Wow, that is awesome. You yeah, know, I I actually looked to see how much of a walk it would be, and I think it would be seven to eight mile round trip. So I might actually even just walk there on one of my walk trips. Although I'll probably smell like ass from sweating so much. All right, I'm gonna give that to Sean then because that book looks fantastic. I just I love the artwork on that. That's what, if you guys are digging for me, that's why I want really beautiful, different, unique artwork. Just like I want my eyes to be tickled in such a way that my joy hits ten out of ten, and that's what that book does. Uh, Invader Zim is always on my want list. Uh, Betty, the final girl. It looks like a fun Archie horror series. That is really cool. Love that. Oh, Liberty Meadows. I was going to say I want the Liberty Meadows. Ah. Uh, I don't know if I need those. Oh, that's an earlier issue, too, I think. I'm guessing Sean grabbed Liberty Meadows because he knows I like the Frank Cho stuff. Pretty sure that's a Sean grab. Uh, what number is this? I'm pretty sure this is a lower number. No, number 13. So not as low as I thought, but still awesome. Uh, Liberty Meadows. I'm going to put that in the, 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 the Sean rules pile. <laughs> Absolutely love those. I'm guessing they were Sean. I could be wrong, but I'm guessing. Uh, spare Parts. Uh, not sure the number, but that's really cool looking. It looks like it's that um, uh, not Tarantino, the um, Rodriguez movie, 
Or was it a Tarantino movie? It kind of looks like that, but it's different. That's really fun. Really like that. Uh, Charlie and Humphrey. That looks fantastic. Love that. Oh, we got some more cool first stuff. I might have this issue. I'm not 100% sure, but I absolutely love the cover of that. That is amazing. Uh, Air Fighters. More Air Fighters. This is the reprint, I think, of the Golden. Let's actually open it up. I bet the interior is better than the... No autographs, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I feel like the interiors of these are probably actually really nice because they're reprints. Uh... Oh, they're black and white reprints. But they look like the line art looks really cool. But yeah, it's it's a Golden Age era. I I think the original would have been in color, though. So they just somehow got the line art. Not sure how they did that. I don't know if they had the original artwork to work with or they, like, decolorized it. Uh, I'm not sure, but that is really cool. I do really like those. Super cool. Oh, you know what? I don't think I have number two, though. So number one, I think I have because it looks familiar. But this one does not look familiar. So that one I think I needed. Okay, that is awesome. Okay, we have about a third of the box to go. This has been such a fun box. Absolutely having a blast with these. Uh, oh, the Sean pile is falling over here. All right, everything's falling over. I got to move some stuff over before it all falls apart. Okay, got to move this box over. Move it over before I damage anything. Okay, give me one second. I'm just moving. The, the books are falling, so I just want to move them before they get damaged. Okay. Woo! That's true. Deodorant and, uh, like, walking on a day when it's 65 out, so I'm not, like, super smelly. But, uh, yeah. No, if I walk three or four or five miles before I go to the comic shop, I'm probably going to be the enemy of everyone in the store. <laughs> uh, Jazz Manor. I don't know what this is, but it looks like a fun, epic music adventure book. I don't know what this is, but that looks really cool. Oh, wow. That looks cool. I'm going to look. Uh, Age is 18 up, so I don't know if I can show the interior, but I am... Yeah, yeah, you guys are an amazing team. I feel. Oh, wait, I don't want to. Just in case there's some nudity. Oh, the interior looks really cool. Oh, uh, oh, oh, there is nudity. <laughs> Never mind. I guess you. <laughs> uh, I really like the interior artwork on this though. That looks really awesome. Um, yeah, this looks like a really, really beautiful book. I really like that one. Okay, this is a good pick. I like this. It looks very interesting to me. I like interesting. I like the idea of some kind of like action adventure music book uh and we got another one. Oh, that's cool you got like a whole set of these uh jenny zero okay this book i bought eight of these from street side so i'm overwhelmed with this one <laughs> but it's an amazing cover so i know why you grabbed it i love that oh nice house on the lake book 11 i might be missing this one actually i don't think i only have um the first six or seven so that's actually really cool oh amethyst that's awesome love the cover the lover is um yeah, the interiors look great on that book. That's a beautiful cover. Uh, Pariah, number two. Interesting looking book. Uh, Dragon Whisper, number one. I do like getting these uh, fifth comics because they're fun, like steampunk type books like that. Uh, Teenage Mutant Turtle, Ghostbusters 2. That's a fun mashup. Love that. Uh, Alien Legion. Okay, I haven't seen a modern Alien Legion book, so that's actually really cool. Uh, Gross Point. Okay, that looks fun. Is that um, uh, Peter Begg? Or bag? Not 100% sure, but I really like that cover. Uh, oh, these are fun, like, Halloween monster covers. Okay, I really like these. I've never seen that before. Um, let's see. We got Looney Tunes 256. Okay, those are fantastic. Now, Jason, you're going to want some of these books back. <laughs> you're going to be like, oh, I want that book now. That's the thing. Sometimes there used to be... Uh, the junk store that used to be on North 9th, I think, and Driggs, they had comic books in like 2004 that were 50 cents, and most of them weren't bagged and boarded. So I used to love going in there and just opening up every book and see um, everything. Well, okay, well, I, you both did a great job. But Sean grabbed a lot of really good stuff there. Um, but yeah, I used to open up every book and just look for books with beautiful interiors. I was collecting by interior art at the time. <laughs> I was just like, I was so sick of Marvel and DC at the time that I was only buying indie stuff. And indie stuff I had to see in the interior just to see if I liked it or not. Uh, these uh, Scooby Apocalypse are amazing. It's like a post-apocalyptic Scooby-Doo. And I think the prices on these are quite pricey. I'm actually shocked to see these for uh, 50 cents each. That's an awesome cover. Love that. Uh, Saga is always good. Uh, Saga is one of my... Oh, I think Sean grabbed this one. Another Peach Momoko. 
you know, peace from Oko always makes me happy. Uh, what's the furthest place from here? This one is signed. Sean picked out this one. He had a copy already signed, so he said I could take that one. Normally, he grabs all the signs stuffed. Oh, you kept number one. Okay, Sean has number one. I have the rest. <laughs> Sean always picks the number ones, just in case it becomes a hot key issue. Uh, Hack Slash of Vampirella. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Boris the Bear. These are super dope. I love the way these ones look. And I don't think I have a ton of them, so it's, I think they grabbed four or five. I forget if... It, I think Sean actually showed me pictures on these ones. So this might have been... Oh, I like this. This is like a Black Hawk homage. Oh, I guess it's an Indiana Jones homage. Uh, I'm not sure what homage that is. Those are really cool, though. I really like those. That's like, do you poo before do you poo. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Uh, Boris the Bear, number 18. That is pretty neat. Uh, a Punisher homage. I actually really like those. Uh, Weavers, one of six. Another Boom Studio. The Atonement Bell. That cover is awesome. Looks like a really awesome horror anthology or horror series. Oop. That one's folded. I got to put that in the box. That one's folded over a little bit. Uh, okay, let's see what else. We got uh, Amethyst, number four. I love Amethyst. Uh, Abba Dazad. It's a cross-gen book, but a beautiful Plug cover. That is, uh, that's a gorgeous cover. I don't think I've seen that before. Oh, number three? Wow, these, they look like traditional, um, maybe pastel pens or, or pastel sticks. These are gorgeous. I haven't seen these before. Uh, number one, I got to look at the interior of these. Was it? There? No, uh, Dark Horse Presents would have been the first. It would have been the first Dark Horse solo uh, comic. Is that what you're saying? Because I think the Dark Horse Presents, technically the first appearance of Concrete is the first Dark Horse book, I believe. Could be wrong, though. You could be correcting me. Uh, wow, the interiors of this. Now, this is very dialogue heavy. I think I'd have a hard time reading this just because it's like, um, or she showed up to school sometimes right in the middle of the day. Take us out of class, drag us home without telling us why. We always imagine some great disaster. The apartment burned down to the ground. Everything we own turned to black ash. But as soon as we get back, no flames in sight. Mom would walk straight into our bedroom, lock the door and go to sleep. So I prefer comics where they would have told all that in a pan. Like, they, this just needed to be a longer comic book, honestly. That feels like a lot of dialogue and all you... they showing her pulling her out of school. I, I'm just not the biggest fan of really dialogue. Like, this is a whole novel on that page. But the artwork's absolutely gorgeous here. Like... Oh, and then... Okay, and then they use... Two pages of telling the storyline without dialogue. That is so weird. They use so they try to cram in as much dialogue to tell the story at the beginning with words. And then they get to the point where they just have moments where she's just relaxing. She's at the carnival. She sees a teddy bear and a bear. But the oh she, oh she let the kid go. She's waiting for the kid. And then it's empty. So the kid's missing. Oh no. Kid's been kidnapped. So that's like that's totally sad. I like I like how that worked because it tells a story where she goes, you know, the kid goes into the boat and comes out. There's no kid, so it's the kid's been kidnapped or something, and so it's like absolutely devastating. Like I love that the storytelling in the image. I didn't have to read that. I could read the story, and then I see the aftermath where she's holding the bear crying. So I just like I want. Oh, I love that panel where she's got the little curio cabinet of stuff. I love the artwork in this. It's absolutely gorgeous. I don't know if I love the very, very dialogue hell where the storytelling is being told in dialogue on several pages, and then other pages, there's no dialogue at all. Which, I prefer the story being told through images. To me, that works way better in a comic format for me. Okay, that looks like a fun book, though. I really like that. Hey, David, I've been on for an hour and a half. Yeah, I know. The first two pages, the word quota was used up. It was way too much dialogue for the first few pages. But then they actually told some beautiful storytelling just in the imagery. Like, I need AI. What I want is AI to redraw or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's a cross-gen. Cross-gen was like a two or three year um, publisher. I don't think it's it's too old for Kickstarter. It's pre-Kickstarter. 2000. So this came out in the year 2000. That's like a old... That's 23 years old. That was a really, really beautiful book though. I like it. 
I just, I've, to me, it just, oh, so much dialogue. I don't know if I like books that are too dialogue heavy. I like storytelling through the images. But that's just me because I'm dyslexic. Maybe you want a novel with some pictures in it. Uh, Vampirella Strikes, number 11. Yeah, I don't know. The, um, YouTube does not promote my channel sometimes. It's really frustrating that it doesn't. people don't get notifications. Really frustrating. But I'm happy you're here now, David. Really appreciate you. Uh, Darkness Behemoth. I want to see what this looks too. The cover looks very interesting. What I like is a cover that kind of draws... It might not be the best cover, but it's drawing my attention. So now I, I want to see what it looks like inside. I want to see if this has like really awesome artwork. Sometimes you look and it's like... Poorly drawn black and white. Sometimes it's beautifully illustrated. So this is a, a stylistic black and white. I, the interior is okay. I don't know if I love it. It's sort of interesting. But it almost feels like they just took photographs and they did some kind of filter on it or something. So I don't know. I don't like that one as much. Interior, the cover looks great though. All right, take care, Lars. Sleep well. Yeah, Frank, uh, I'm pretty sure I really enjoy reading Frank Miller, but I, I don't remember um, the text to uh, illustration levels. Uh, Jughead, The Hunger, I do love these Archie horror books a ton. Uh, Archie number one, a fun um, variant cover. That's cool. really like that. Uh, Archie number four, uh, Jaime, Jaime Reyes cover. Love that. That's really awesome. Uh, Jughead number 12 variant. I love that cover. That cover is gorgeous. Okay, let me clear these out. Okay, we're down to the last two handfuls. I'm going to be sad when this box is over. I'm going to really need more boxes that Sean and uh, Jason put together. Because honestly, this box... This isn't just like a random box of stuff where I like some of it. This is a box where two of my friends definitely picked out stuff they know I like. So I, I've liked everything. I, there hasn't been one book where I'm like, this is absolutely trash. I would never pick that up. Like this book, I'd pick this up in a heartbeat. This cover is amazing. The Hollows. Oh, it's a trade paperback for 50 cents or 75 cents. Love the cover. I got to look at the interior. Like, this just looks amazing. It's calling my name. Oh, and the interior is just as amazing as the cover. Absolutely. Like, look at this. Every page is hand-painted uh, and drawn on, uh, like, pastels, watercolor, maybe color pencils. That is a cool-ass book. Wow, I love that. Okay. Yeah, I love that modern Archie books have modern takes modern artists it's just interesting the jazz the jazz mainers looks awesome okay you love ecc i i can't stand ec books because it's such it's basically i love the artwork i just hate reading them because it's so hard for me because it's you know a whole paragraph explaining what's in the um the panel and then they draw the panel it's like they're giving you too much dialogue for what it is uh, Don, there isn't any specific flat rate. If it's a really junky box, it might be 20 cents. 20 cents. Uh, if it's a really beautiful box of stuff, it might be like $300. It really depends on what's in it. It does. It, I was kind of thinking Sam Keith, even the signature. Is it, is it Sam Keith? Like that, is that, that looks like his signature, isn't it? That could be a, a, a Sam Keith right there. Not a hundred percent. Uh, but being said with the EC books, I collect them. I love the artwork. I love the covers. I love sci-fi and horror. I think they're amazing. The storytelling is good. It just it's so cumbersome for me to read that it's it's not a fun process. So I don't enjoy them. But that's because I'm dyslexic. My brain is different. I like comics because of the image storytelling, not so much because of the dialogue. Yeah, if, if you can you could almost skip the the all the boxes that describe and just read what people are reading in between, you know, when they actually talk to each other. That makes sense. Only the dialogue. All right, Ian, that totally makes sense to me. Uh Drywall Oswald show. That looks fun. It looks like an old cereal box. Um Ella Henny Traveler, the legend. That looks very interesting. Not sure what that is, but that looks really cool. Uh end after end. Ah, uh, I gotta look at that one too. That one looks very interesting. Yeah, I was pretty sure it was a Sam Keith book. So that's amazing. What a great graphic novel. Oh, the interiors look pretty fun on this. I like the... Just the coloring on this really pops. It looks... Uh, I think it's watercolor just by the way the um, 
ink kind of meshes into the paper. Don't think this is digital totally colored. I could be wrong, but I really, really like that. I think that that book looks really cool. Yeah, that is a gorgeous book. Okay, I like that. You guys picked out so many beautiful... Oh, uh, Andrew Fox, Hard Looks. That's a cool book. I know um, he's friends with Jeff Darrow, so I think they worked together on a few things. And what's this? And my also. I, I'm not sure what that is, but that looks like a really fun indie to me. Oh, we got Bronze Age Call. That is cool. Really like that. Love Bronze Age stuff. Uh, Jason Kreider Toy Boy. <laughs> I don't know. This one looks goofy, but I like it. I like it. Uh, Amethyst number three. That is awesome. I love Amethyst. Oh, okay. I don't think I have this first either. Nice. So I don't think I had the Twilight Man book. So that's cool that I have two of those. Uh, Hepcats number 10. Martin Wagner. It looks very interesting. I kind of want to see what's inside. Oh, yeah, I, I, every time I try to read them, I just, the, there's so much dialogue, it overwhelms me. So if, if you recommend just reading the dialogue and look at the imagery, I probably actually would read that a lot more. If, I, I want um, number one if you see another one. Uh, wait, this says it's a mature theme, so I don't know if I could show it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're getting it on inside. They're getting it on. Okay, three pages getting on. Wow, the artwork is gorgeous on this book, though. Like, just all the line work on this, absolutely gorgeous. This book is amazing. But, yeah, they were getting it on the first two or three pages. It has a very, uh, like, Cerebus kind of look to it. I love that. That's gorgeous. Uh... There's a little bit in the back here. I don't know if I like these pages as much. They're kind of weak. But, um, yeah, the, the main storyline looks gorgeous on this one. Really like that. The cover doesn't really do it for me so much, but the interior is amazing. So End After End was was digital. It wasn't... Um, was that the one that I thought might have been... So that was digital. Okay. It looks gorgeous, though. I really like it. Uh, all right. Thunder Agents, number two. That's fun. It's like our newer comics of, like, I didn't know they did newer Thunder Agent books. I have all those uh, Silver Age ones. So those are super cool. And then this looks like our reprint of the Silver Age one. Okay. Those are actually really cool. Okay. Uh... All right, I'm going really slow here. I don't want this box to end. I don't want it to end at all. Don't want it to end. I'm having too much fun with this box. This box is fantastic. Okay, you guys really did an amazing job for me. Uh, we have Skiz First Encounter. Uh, this is uh, Fleetway quality. I think the print quality of this is actually really nice. But again, it's when prices like double the Marvel and DC stuff. No, all right. Some of these have absolutely gorgeous interiors. This one is, is like, it looks like a bad reprint of something that was older. So I'm not sure if I like this one that much. I mean, it's okay, but cover looks really cool. Uh, I think what um, YouTube is doing right now is if multiple people watch... Uh, oh, it's oh, it's Neil Adams. Okay, that makes it better. <laughs> I was like, it sounded like a goofy comics. Um, yeah, 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 Lars, I have that book that Jeff Darrow. I have pretty much everything Jeff Darrow has ever done. I love his stuff. Um, but yeah, no, YouTube has a thing now that it demonetizes you if you have too many um, invalid views or something. It's something that's going on right now that's hurting a lot of channels. But yeah, I would love it. I mean, I would love to make coin. I would like to make enough money that I could afford a studio and do comic videos every day. I would be such a happy person if I could daily comic call like this. That would be like my joy level number 38. I don't even make enough right now to cover my uh, monthly phone bill to cover the live streams. <laughs> so I do this purely for the joy of it. And, and, and I love entertaining you guys for the joy of entertaining. <laughs> One day, I hope I make some revenue on it. Uh, okay, we got uh, Lock and Key. Welcome to Lovecraft. That is awesome. Do like I really, really like the show. So I, I, every time I see the books, I pick them up. Uh, oh, we have a Ninja Funk number one. Okay, I have like eighty copies of this, but I do really like the Ninja Funk. I'm gonna actually open it up a little bit. 
Okay, this is... Um, uh, so I know a lot of people don't like it just because it's a whatnot comic, but I actually... Like, the interior artwork was interesting to me. I like the way it looks. It's a sci-fi tale where the universe... Like, it's very gory. And it's a sci-fi tale where the universe is, like... The, the musical vibe of the universe is sort of out of whack, so Ninja Funk actually has to... Um, kind of save the day and readjust the universe so it's like a really fun sci-fi tale and I, I liked it i thought the first one was really cool you know and i think the first episode ends up with this crazy like event that goes on that really shifts things and like people are just being destroyed and then look at that panel god doom it's like the um jbg i think is a big fan of akira so it's a very akira feeling moment at the end there and then it just it ends with them kind of defeated. They're supposed to be saving the universe. And they're I, I really liked it. I thought it was a fun um, storyline. Oh, you, you're welcome, Pulsar. I appreciate that you hang out and watch my videos and, and have fun with me. I do really appreciate that. Oh, that's cool. So you watch it on the TV and type it on the phone. Okay, so you like double watching it, but also the TV is more fun because you can see it better. And um, yeah, I, I, I thought it was a fun comic, but it's not like... The best written book ever, but it's definitely enjoyable, especially if you like sci-fi stuff. And um, I, I like it. I will promote it because I don't think it's a book you should... You know, a lot of people... Oh, wait. We were right here. People seem to dump on it because it's a whatnot book, but I think it's really cool to see an indie book having such big success. i rather see something like Ninja Funk become more popular than Spider-Man. Because you know what? It's something new and interesting, and it's not just a big corporation at the moment. Now, it might in 20 years it might be, but for now, I enjoy seeing little guys do big things. So I think it's super cool. And and I enjoy it. I think it's pretty neat. And the interior is pretty neat. And you have to remember, too, they, they're they a big company that's... Or not big company, but they're big in you know um, the Spider-Man booth and Street Level Hero. They're big at getting big artists to do variant covers. So Ninja Funk will always have lots of good artwork. And lots of cool variant covers. All right, uh, all right. This is cool because this is a Mark Evaner written storyline, and Mark Evaner is the writer on Gru. Absolute Gru is one of my all-time favorite. So I do like anything that he works on. So we have Crossfire Twenty Four. Again, I want to work on my Eclipse line. So these are fantastic. Uh, Eclipse Twenty Number Twenty Two, Number Twenty. So I don't think I have a lot of these. So these are fantastic. Number Twenty. Uh, Clash Book One, Adam Kubert cover. I think I have these. Not 100% sure, but those are pretty cool. Uh, so this is, yeah, these are Neil Adam books. So Earth 4. <laughs> Earth 4. Uh, like, I kind of like the colorist. I don't know if I like the colors so much on these, but these are pretty cool. Uh, obviously, the line work is kind of pretty. Uh, Earth 4. Kamikaze number 2. Fun, like, sci-fi alien cover. Kamikaze number 3. Uh, Six Million Dollar Man. That's super fun. I do like when they do modern books on old school stuff. Six Million Dollar Man. Uh, not sure the number on that. Shoplifters will be liquidated. I absolutely love that. I got to look at the interior. Though. I love the name of that. Yeah, Comic Tom is on whatnot. Uh, Gem Mint's on whatnot. Uh, Bronzeville Comics is on whatnot. There's people that have small channels. I'm on whatnot. There's people with small channels. There's people with big channels. There's all kinds of people on whatnot. I personally love Whatnot. I know there's been some bad sellers on Whatnot. And the thing is, there's bad sellers at Comic-Cons. There's bad sellers that have shops. There's bad sellers all over the place. So what you do is you find the sellers that you absolutely love and you buy from them. You don't have to buy from the bad sellers. You just have to kind of uh, figure out who you're really comfortable buying with and who you like to buy from. I love buying from, like, um, I like J.B. Fletcher because he's entertaining. I love buying from um, Godzilla Comics because they've done such a awesome job giving me cheap books, but then they sell, like, really nice books, key issues for a good price. Um, I like buying from Push-Pull Comics because it's, this, you know, it's the other half of the team. I like buying from Comic Traders. They're one of the bigger vendors, but they are very fair. They have lots of great deals, and you they give away a lot of stuff. There's a lot of vendors on Whatnot that I absolutely love. I got to look at this one, too. But there are some vendors I bought from that I had a terrible experience that I didn't buy from again. Comic Tom, I've only bought from once or twice. I never really found too much I needed to buy from him. I don't really like to buy modern books for a really high price unless it's an artist I absolutely love. Um, This looks kind of fun. I like the simple nature of the coloring, but I also like the detail on the coloring. Like It's more of like a green and gray wash. Very interesting looking book. I actually really like this. 
Okay, that's beautiful. Hey, Sixer Fixer. I've, I think I've bought from Gem Mint a few times more because he does really good deals on some of his books. And he does really amazing giveaways. Uh, poop Show. Let's see what this one looks like. Uh, mature Readers. All right, I'm going to have to preview before I show you. Oh, the interior looks pretty cool, though. I like it's It's uh, digitally drawn and colored. I th I, whoever colored it is probably the same as the... No, maybe it's a separate colorist. It kind of looks like it was drawn and colored together, though. But I like it. It looks really, really cool. Okay, I love it. I love finding new, uh, fun indie stuff. Hey, Mr. Brightside. Hey, Sixer Fixer, if I didn't say hello, I forgot. My brain is tired. <laughs> I woke up so tired today because I did, you know, a big long walk yesterday after I hadn't walked in like a week. So I used up all my energy for a month. Oh, oh, this is cool. I love Echo Land's covers. It's a sideways book. And uh, I just think the covers are gorgeous. Absolutely love that. Uh, the Mask Man, number 11. That looks cool. Nice eclipse book. Uh, I don't think I actually have these. So those are really cool. Uh, Kamikaze, number four. That's fun. Uh, Delgado, number four. Do really like the covers on these. I, I just love the Delgado covers. This artist feels very much like Mobius, and it's colored like Mobius. So it has a very much... It's not quite as good as Mobius, but it has a Mobius feel to me. So I do really like these. Just the, the coloring and the line art. Yeah, it has a very much of a Mobius feel to me. So it's definitely... I think they were influenced by Mobius. Uh, but I really, I mean, I, Mobius is one of my all-time favorite artists, so I don't mind a cool comic book that's inspired by Mobius. Beautiful comic. Absolutely love that. All right, we're just the last handful, and then we can get into a few other things. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I've been slow the last month. I really, I would like to do a lot more comic videos. I am going to try to do a lot more uh, walking videos as well. I got to get back on the ball. It just got too hot the last few weeks. Uh, these are super cool. They found a whole set of these um, Bronze Age Claw books. Claw number two, absolutely love those. Uh, Nightmare number one, I'm not sure what that is, but that cover is really cool. Uh, Claw number five, love that. Claw number 10. Claw number 11. These are really cool. Claw 12. Claw 3. And I, I know I have a couple of them, but I don't think I had the whole thing. And that looks like a Mike Manola cover, I think. I could be wrong, though. The Creep, number 1. Oh, wow. That's a beautiful Vampirella Red Sonia cover. Love that cover. That is gorgeous. And uh, $6 million man. Wow. That's uh, That was an amazing box, Sean and Jason. I appreciate you guys. And honestly... Uh, you guys both win. You both win for the best picks. Because honestly, I love the whole box. And you both found things I loved. And you probably found things that are a little bit different. On different spectrums of things I love. And I appreciate that. That was uh, that was awesome. I cannot wait to have you guys find more comics for me. <laughs> hey, Jason, I don't mind funding purchases for yourself. If you volunteer your time, I'll pay for it. <laughs> Yeah, you did amazing. I like. I want you to do it tomorrow. <laughs> I want you to do it as much as you can. Because I, like, for 75 cents a book, even if it's something I didn't want, you know, I know I could make a profit on it. And But I think everything was stuff that I would have picked out myself. Or maybe like 95% of it. And then the other stuff I picked out in the past already for myself. So it's already, like, stuff I would have picked out already. So I either had it because I loved it or, or I loved that you found it for me. And, like, you guys also found me some just really amazing kind of... Oh, you had fun doing it, too. Okay. I'm, I, I uh, We'll have to figure it out how to do it. Because I uh, it was a blast. It was really, really fun. I mean, it was fun just, like, talking to you guys while you are there. It was fun. Like, I didn't see too much you're picking out, but it was fun, like, the anticipation and everything. Okay, I'm not done yet, though. We're only hour 40 minutes. I would like to go for, like, another hour. Uh, Echo does have really cool art. I have uh, more Adventure Time stuff, and I have uh, more... Uh, actually, let's go through more of the uh, Spider-Man booth stuff, because I have a lot of that to go through. And then... Uh, okay, so this pack I paid $53 for. And I just I want to get these processed so I can pull out the duplicates and get them for sale. So we have uh, DC vs. Vampires number one. Awesome, beautiful cover. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 49. 
Uh, Devil's Reign number one. So this is one of their floor packs. Uh, let's see. Edge of Spider-Verse number two. Uh, Joe Psycho and Moo Frog. Not sure what that is. That's interesting, though. A really beautiful Mark Brooks virgin variant. And Ninja Funk. No, this is Bolo's Playground. So this is the Ninja Funk spinoff series. I actually want to see if the interior is the same artist. Appreciate that, David. Uh, yeah, same artist inside. And I like I like the art. It's really fun. It's got like a watercolored kind of look to it. And it's it's fun and playful. I you know, I enjoy it. I think it's cool. And there's oh David Mack splash page. That is awesome. Love David Mack. Like, oh wow, okay, that is cool. Okay, so something happens at the end of the issue where like a portal opens up, right? It's opening up a portal. And you see a blurry of the David Mack there. And then you have this David. So that's part of the storyline. So the last page is just a beautiful. Wow, I love that idea. So they they took would not be traditionally a, a splash panel page that they would use just as like an extra work of art or a cover. And they turned it into actually a page in the story. What a cool concept. I absolutely love that. That is so freaking cool. Okay, and then... Uh... Then there's like a little preview thing. Oh, and see, that's uh, those are all the different variant covers. That's what, like they they do these cool homage covers. They have several David Mack covers. I do really like what they're doing with these. And like this mini series has a beautiful artwork too. That is a cool book. Really, really love that. Yeah, sure. And I'll have to reel you in as well to pick out more books for me because <laughs> that was a blast and so much fun with that. Okay, let's, uh, so that was, like, $8 an issue was probably a little bit high on that pack. But that was a floor pack. I gotta find some of the winning packs. Okay, so this pack was $45. Uh, this looks like another floor pack, which means I'll have, you know, stuff like this, I'll end up putting in the shop for, like, $12.99. Uh, a Sun Kamaneki Harley Quinn cover. I do really like her artwork. I want to collect a lot more of her stuff. Not my favorite cover of hers, but I do like her artwork. Uh, Star Wars, War of the Bounty Hunters, number five. Red Gum. So it looks like I'm getting some duplicates that I can put in the shop. Uh, a Fun Green Arrow. A Virgin Variant. Not sure of the series. And uh, Ninja Funk, number one, I think. The David Mack Variant. Signed by JPG. All right, so that's cool. Uh, these weren't SJ. These are from Eddie. I kind of wish I bought them from SJ, though. I prefer buying from SJ usually. I don't know what I was sick, so my, I wasn't right in the mind, and I just got in the mood to buy uh, their mystery packs because I love trying to win. Oh, and like, uh, so I paid 161 for this one. This was what he did was at the end of the show there was two left over, and he flipped it, and I could tell this one was like double the size. So I knew that was a winning pack. So let's look out. I paid 161. I should have just waited to the end and bought one winning pack. That's all I needed. I didn't need to buy all the cheaper ones, but I get so caught up that. You know, I love trying to win more than the odds. Uh, I don't flip new books like that. So, no, I don't really... I'm not in the business of buying comics. I'm in the business of finding the best deal for myself. And then I sell off the... Um, oh, yeah, the Sun Kamenicki covers are absolutely gorgeous. I love her artwork. If you watched last week, I got a really awesome Vampirella one, which I thought was fantastic. But, yeah, I don't really buy comics to sell for the most part but i do sell comics in my shop and i sell a lot of comics in my shop but i'm mostly looking for the best deals for myself and then i sell off duplicates because i i'm on the edge of being a hoarder so i don't need to keep more than one if it's not a key issue or something i think that'll have value so i i probably wouldn't go out and buy a hundred of the disney variant i i honestly i don't really like those disney variants i don't i only have one or two in my collection i'll go buy them when they're a dollar i'm not gonna go on my way and pay big money for them i have a feeling they'll crash in value and i'll get one that are cheap uh, all right, Essentia number 17. So all these should be like kind of rare variants. Um, the 300 number one, Bill Sinkavich cover. I love that. Oh, the Bowles Playground, the David Mack cover. Absolutely love that cover. Really happy. I think this is like the one in 25, something like that. Uh, Ninja Funk number one. I think this is like a one in 15 variant. Uh, I'm not sure which Ninja Funk this is, but I'm pretty sure that's a pretty rare variant. And all these are signed by the uh, JBG, the creator of Ninja Funk. Uh, final boss. Not sure the number, but that's an awesome David Mack cover. Love David Mack. I mean, I'm buying these packs, trying to win these ceilings, because what I want is these really rare variants. 
Uh, this beautiful um, Last Ronin, I think. That is gorgeous. A beautiful Mark Brook variant. Another Mark Brooks variant. Gorgeous cover. A beautiful David Nakayama variant. Love that one a ton. I'm actually really happy to get that. Um, the Mighty Thor. This might be a 1 in 100 variant. And this one's signed by Donny Cates, I believe. Yeah, Donny Cates signed that one. Uh, Scarlet Witch number 3. This one is signed by Steve Orlando, which is awesome. Uh, this gorgeous, gorgeous cover. Is that uh, Ariel Diaz? I think that's an Ariel Diaz cover. Absolutely love that cover. I'm, I am stockpiling, but... I'm happy to sell... All, like, if I get duplicates in these packs, I'm going to sell them off because I don't think they'll have much um, future value. But yeah, I mean, one day when I'm like 60, I'll probably end up selling a lot of my comics to kind of fund my, uh, you know, my retirement. <laughs> and uh, if I... Yeah, if I'm correct, that pack also had... For $161, I got those books, but I also got a, um, a graded comic book. So that's the cool thing with them, too, is they'll do graded books with every um ceiling so that's a uh not the cool this was kind of a weaker one of the top prizes but this was a green lantern number 103 but this one is signed by ron mars so it's a yellow labeled uh signature verification but yeah i love love um i don't know the signed books when they're in the actual yellow label i kind of love those i think those are super cool so 161, ah, maybe. I don't know. I feel like it was a pretty good deal on that pack, but I I paid up on that one because I knew it was a winning pack because I could tell it was one of the last ones and you could figure out which one was the winning pack. I think I did win one or two other winning packs, though. Uh, okay, I paid 43 for this one. It says it was an all-virgin pack. So for $8 a piece, all-virgin packs are actually quite a good deal. So when you hit those, you go... Basically, you're looking for these and you're looking for the ceiling packs. So this is a really fun Greg Horn Hulk cover. Love that. A really awesome Lee and Hulk uh, Carnage cover. Love Lee and Hulk, so I'm happy to get that. Uh, the Red Goblin Virgin variant. That's really cool. Uh, I gotta see what comic this is. I don't even know what this is. Uh, it's The building is family-owned, so my rent is really cheap. That's the only way I could do this. If I had to pay New York City rent, I would have to sell uh, cigarettes and lottery tickets. So yeah, that, I thought that was a haha. -ha. So the haha -ha Virgin variant, uh, Lee and Hook Virgin variant, beautiful, beautiful cover. I'm actually really happy with that pack because I needed the Lee and Hook covers, and I try to collect everything he does. So for me, these would cost like twenty five each in the shop, maybe twenty. So, like, I basically paid what full value on those and then got those ones for free. So, that's pretty cool. Love that. Uh, let's see. Pack 73. I paid 38. So, I did get a couple packs cheaper. I think that's what kind of sucked me into the, um, the buy-in that night is that the price was cheap. And they were doing free shipping now, too. So, it was 38 shipped. So, I put one and, you know, I get addicted to these things. Uh, War of the Bounty Hunters, number two. Uh, Batman, Arkham City. Hulk, number three. Fun variant. Uh, really awesome Frank Cho, 300 cover. Love that one. Uh, I The only stuff I didn't like are these older, cheaper dollar bin books. So that's not exciting. But this is super awesome. A Virgin variant, David Nakayama cover. I actually needed that issue. So I'm thrilled to get that. I would have paid like 20 just for that. So that's like half the value. And then everything else was just a couple dollars an issue. Uh, Ninja Funk Sign. That's awesome. Okay, happy with that. Uh, I mean, it would be worth getting them signed. I have... Lee and Hook, I have 50 or so comics signed by. Maybe not 50. I have at least 10 to 50. Somewhere between 10 and 50 Lee and Hook signed books. Because KRS Comics often has them for sale in, um, in their whatnot shows. And I get them for like 20 bucks. So I buy them left and right. Oh, this one was uh, $77 for five. So I paid 12 each. I don't know why I paid someone. I must have guessed that this was a winning pack. Although this might be... Oh, this is an all-virgin pack. So this was not too bad for the price. We have a... Um, uh, is that a Gabriel Diotto? I forget. I forget the artist that did that. A uh, virgin variant. I'm not sure what series that is. Another one of these, David Nakayama. So, I, you know, that one... Probably sell in the shop the duplicate for 25 maybe. So I think that it's okay. Like the pack... Not, I didn't have this one yet. So I really, really wanted that one. This was a Megacon exclusive, I think. I gotta double check. I know these were like 30 at the con. Uh, no, it just, it's just an unknown comic. 616 Comic Traders Anti-Hero Gallery. 
I feel like that might have been a con exclusive. I'm not 100% sure. But I know it was on my want list, so I was actually really happy to get it. I pretty much collect everything David Nakayama does. And then a really awesome homage to Spider-Man 316. So that pack, actually, 77 felt high, but what I got, I got the value out of it. Okay. I'm actually enjoying these a lot more. I, I haven't... I bought these, like, a month and a half ago, and I didn't want to film them because I just like, ah... I didn't feel like I got anything I really, really loved. But now that I'm going through them again, I actually really, really like a lot of this stuff. So I'm happy I got them. I got a duplicate of this. So I could sell that for like 20, 25. Uh, a fun Darkwing Duck, I want to say. Darkwing Duck Virgin variant. That's an awesome cover. Absolutely love that. Uh, duplicate of Red Robin. Duplicate of Haha. -Ha, duplicate of Greg Horn Hulk. Okay. So I'm going to have lots of duplicates. But I paid, you know, if I can get $20 each on those three i get most of my money back and or 80 if i do 20 dollars each i'll get all my money back and i gotta keep one for free so that's cool i like that okay sleep well showing it awesome thank you so much for um putting my uh box together with jason i really really appreciate it and it was a lot of fun uh i right now 70 percent of my sales are funko pops it's kind of annoying comics only represent five to ten percent of my weekly sales so i don't really buy comics to sell them because comics are not very sellable the only thing that's really sellable is if i sell major key issues for like half price then they'll blow out but i can't do that they're hard to get uh oh how much was this one i don't know which pack this was uh i think i paid 45 for this pack um so right now most of my sales are funko pops i sell a lot of trading cards a lot of pokemon i sell a lot of uh, records records are a big sale my biggest problem with records though is i can't restock them easily they're hard to restock so i have to rely on one person that restocks me but he sells most of his stuff to other shops and then he puts gives me stuff on consignment so records don't sell enough for me to buy them at full 50 percent of retail like if i think i might get 30 for them i can't really pay 15 because they don't sell fast enough so i might pay 10 um but he you know he sells other shops that are willing to pay 15 because that's their main focus um, I also sell um, odds and ends, like cassette tapes. Uh, VHS has been really good. I've been selling three to four hundred dollars worth of VHS a week the last month or so. So I've been buying a lot more of that. Uh, VHS, I sell more VHS than comics. There's been days where I sell more Beanie Babies than comics. Comics are not easy business, so I don't go on my way to sell them. But I do put all my duplicates out for sale because they will sell. I will like the last week I sold maybe five hundred dollars worth of comics, so it's not. I'm not getting rich off comics, but it helps me do the videos, which I really, really enjoy. I mean, I right now when I do a big haul video like this, I just, I'm in heaven. This is fun. How fun is it to go through a box of comics like this and hang out together and chat about the comics, maybe make fun of some of the bad ones, maybe celebrate the really awesome ones, hang out with friends, uh, have friends help me collect all that. So, Yeah, exactly. I try to find collections and, and comics that are cheap enough so that I can sell off duplicates and try to... If I can break even on the comics, then I'm happy because then I'm collecting for free just with a little bit of work. So I'm not really looking to make a profit on the comics. The comics are for my own enjoyment. And, you know, one day when I'm ready to retire, maybe I'll sell off all the big expensive ones or I'll sell them off and I'll, I'll, I'll make a good amount of money. But right now, I'm just trying to get as many comic books as I can that I don't have for free. That's a, my ultimate goal is to break even on comics. It's not to make a big, big um, uh, profit on it. Yeah, no, but that there's nothing wrong with breaking even on comics. I'm not buying comics to make a profit because they're not profitable in my sense. They're not easy to sell. Unless you're giving them away for super duper cheap. Then you can sell them. I can sell bulk comics at a quarter a piece. If I put a lot of these together that cost me $8 a piece, I'm like, you want to buy them for a dollar? People will buy them for a dollar. These aren't dollar books. These are like $12 books. So $12 books, I'll sell a little bit in a week. But I, it's not, it's, I don't think it's guilty to run your hobby in a way that you're trying to break even. Because then you, I'm not spending any of my money to buy the comics. I'm having the comics feed themselves if that makes sense and if you've seen i've been buying a lot of comics lately but a lot of the comics the big amount of purchases i'm making is because i've been selling off my funko pop collection so basically one part of my collection has been feeding a second part of my collection and so that's what i do i just i buy and sell stuff and i try to collect the things i love like when i can pick up something like this for 40 bucks it's like absolute joy to me so that's the point always trying to break even and then i let the other side i let the records like i don't collect records so every record i get i sell 
I don't really collect trading cards. So all the Pokemon I sell, there's a lot of things that I, or the Funko Pops, I've stopped collecting the last year and a half. So all the Funko Pops I'm getting, I'm selling. So certain things I buy just for the, it's profit. Comics don't sell well enough for me to buy. There's a lot of comic shops that just do not do that well on, you know, it's hard to run a comic shop unless you're um, you're in the game playing it in a different way. Like Midtown Comics does big giant distribution and stuff and that really helps them going. And um, it's like there's some people that make a collection and then they sell their collection to start a comic shop and then they fail after a year because they don't know how to run the shop prof profitably. So for me, like a lot of comic shops today are selling Pokemon and magic cards and that because that's kind of how you stay in business. Even with my local comic shops, they're adding records. They're adding VHS tapes. They're adding other things. Because right now, the comic market is not working as well as it was during the pandemic. Uh, but I still love comics. That's why I buy them. I buy them to do videos. And then uh, hopefully the videos make a little bit of revenue to help pay for some of the costs. And then I sell off duplicates to kind of break even. So that's kind of explains it, I guess. Not like It's hard to explain how I do it. It's, just, it's the way I've always collected because it lets me collect as much as I want. You just have to find a way for it to kind of pay for itself. Uh, Batman 89, that's an awesome cover. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 14. I forget if that's her first appearance or not. Uh, Megaton Man number one. That's a really cool comic. Uh, Dave, uh, David Nakayama, another version. So that one will kind of pay for half the collection. Oh, and I think I needed this one. Bolo's Playground, the really awesome Transformers. I believe issue number four homage. So that's super cool. I'm actually really happy to get that. And thank you, Tina. I'm happy you've been having fun. I'm having fun. I have fun every night that I can just do comic content. Uh, okay, now we have pack 15. I paid 51 for it. Um, and also, Joshua, the other thing, too, is I, I'm, I'm, I'm successful at it. I don't have a job. I don't spend money from a job to buy comics. I run a business buying and selling stuff. Um, so it's like... I don't have to justify anything. I'm showing you. Watch how much I buy. All of that is everything from... Um... Oh, you got every mega... Oh, those are kind of expensive, I think, Jason. That's actually a great, uh, a great score. That was at the um, 99 cent pile. That's actually kind of cool. I think number one, though, is quite pricey. Uh, Cyber Wars High Republic, number six. Uh, X-Men 14, an awesome Kale New cover. Venom, number 33. Uh, Hellions, number five. Jay Anacleto cover. The Exterminators, number three. Uh, another Ninja Funk, number one. I'm holding on to all the Ninja Funks I get just because I could put it out for three or four bucks. It probably won't sell. I'd rather just hold it on because if it ever does become something, these will be worth something. Um, and then Dark John, number three. Absolute Comic Group. I do want to get all their comics as well. They're just kind of hard to get. All right, awesome. Pretty happy with that pack. Price was not too expensive. Oh, and hey, Jimmy. And hey, Card Imperial and Comics. Uh, okay, let's see. I think there's one more of these packs that are... Hey, Indie Key Comics. And you're welcome. I'm not sure what you're saying. Thanks, or you appreciate, but you're very welcome. <laughs> Unless someone said hello to you. Uh, okay, let's see what we got. Uh, I paid 58 for this pack. This, uh... <sighs> This is just a uh, base I pay a lot. So I, I probably did overpay on some of these packs. But these are all store exclusives. So honestly, at the end of the day, I'm just trying to break even on the cheaper packs so that I can keep the rare ones. I know I wasn't on for a while because I was sick. And then uh, like mentally, I just I got worn out. I, you know, I spent 200 hours to do the free whatnot video and i had like a few people really pissed off that i was like raiding free stuff like i was being greedy or something but so that kind of negatively affected me but what am i supposed to do you know i i like the rate packaging it, it doesn't matter if i spent a dollar or a thousand dollars i want something shipped properly uh moon knight number one that's awesome is that audi granoff i think awesome cover love that one a uh, punchline number two awesome ivan Tao cover this is actually a pretty fun pack uh accent 449 though for some reason that night they were sneaking in one older not so valuable book and that that i didn't like in the packs as much uh i forget what that is that's a duplicate and another ninja funk ninja funk uh no, another bolo's playground ninja funk number one all right so that was a pretty okay pack not great but not bad uh okay let's see this is pack 83 
Yeah, Tina is all over the uh, the comic channel. She's amazing, and she is in the running for the uh, best moderator fan category in the uh, comic book awards. So if you guys do vote for those awards, make sure you vote for Tina. She deserves it. She is awesome. Um, that's uh, I mean, Marvel Legends and Mufaran toys are fun. I like them. Uh, let's see. Uh, this all right. This pack was thirty five, so this is a cheap pack. Yeah, a lot of people like to put my videos on just to have as like background noise because they're a good long two hours, which I prefer too. Sometimes when I watch your videos, because sometimes you have something to do, and you don't want to be looking for videos every ten seconds. So you just like if I'm falling asleep and I I can flip really really quick through um like you know shorts or whatever, that's good for five minutes. But if you want something in the background while you're doing work or something, it's good to have a long video. Uh, the winners don't get announced till uh, December, I think, Jason. So it's going to be a few months of voting, which I'm not really promoting it so much, but towards the end, I might promote it a little bit. I don't want to spam people too much, but I want Tina to win. Tina deserves to win. So she's my number one uh, choice. But I also, I, you know, I would vote for uh, Jerry the Jitterbug in the um, restoration category. I'd probably vote for Alan, the comic collector geek, in the one to 5,000 uh unhaul series if if you want to vote for me that's okay but if you don't for, for, vote for me it's oh, i'm in the five thousand. but i'm against like gem and collectible so i don't know if there's a chance i'll be even close to winning uh big b he's always on the channels too so big b i voted for him for best uh community organizer i appreciate that tina I do appreciate that and then um uh, i forget i voted for a couple other people i watched but there's some things i didn't vote for because i just don't know the people Oh, Indie Key Comics, you got nominated twice? Okay, Indie Key Comics, vote for them as well. They're always in the, the channel here. So I didn't even know you were nominated. Was it for different channels or was it for Indie Key Comics? Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I've been in the community for three years, so I think this is the first time I've been nominated. So I don't, I just don't know. <laughs> well I'll, I'll i'll mention it on maybe my pop channel at some point i just i don't want to spam people about it because if i win i'm thrilled but if i don't win it i don't want to be sad about it but i do i'll be sad if tina doesn't win <laughs> all right we have this beautiful uh mark brooks cover another one of these awesome darkwing duck i, I mean i love that cover that cover is cool another one so i'm gonna have some, these are all duplicates uh okay so this pack i paid 35 35 was super cheap on this pack i think i can get like 20 to 25 each on all these so one two three four five so 20 dollars is a steal on these 25 is usually what i price in the store but i'll do 20 if people buy like five of them like five for 100 so even at 20 dollars a piece i'll make 65 that pays for like a pack and a half Oh, thank you, Indie Key Comics. I appreciate that. I like being positive. Like, sometimes I might get a little bit negative if I'm upset at someone. I try not to be negative, though, because you know what? There's a lot of just, like, we're here to have fun, right? I'm here to have a positive, fun time. I like hanging out with you guys. i become very intolerant of people that are negative that come into the channel, so I've been blocking people more often. Uh, I just want to have a fun time, honestly. Uh, okay, this one, I paid 56 for this pack. Uh, and this was a floor pack. So, yeah, this one probably not the value but it's not terrible like i think this i could probably get 10 to 12 out of um i think that's the first one we got that and again they kept doing these uh older books though like that one is a little bit disappointing in a pack like this uh this was cool though i do want to get all the absolute comic group stuff so not the greatest pack but not terrible Okay, next pack. All right, just a couple more of these packs. And then I have uh, one more Adventure Time box. And then I have two long boxes that are from a couple weeks ago that are from a month ago that we can go through. All right, I paid 38 on this one too. You know what it was? I was buying packs cheap, but then I really got like kind of into the, the the heat of the moment. And that's why I started paying more for some of the packs because I really, really wanted to win a ceiling. And I think I still beat the odds, but I didn't beat them as well as I have in the past. Uh, so this is another floor pack and these are duplicates. But I'm pretty sure most... Well, that one I didn't get. But the duplicates, I'm pretty sure... And that's an older one that's not really worth anything. Uh, something like that, I could probably get 15 to 20. And then that one, that one, that one, and that one are probably like 10. So I could probably make a small profit on this. And then White Widow, I think I needed that one. So that was not too bad. But again, the main reason why I buy these packs is because I want the ceilings. The ceilings are where the... Um, 
you know, I want the really rare Ninja Funk type books. The stuff that would be hard to get, or if you go on eBay, they're just too expensive. Uh, Marauders, number 15. Really beautiful cover. Uh, let's see. Venom, 29. Uh, again, I, one of the cheaper books. I don't like those so much. Uh, Thor, number 9. Uh, Spawn, The Dark Ages, number 3. I think that's also kind of a cheaper book. Uh, Bolo's Playground, 1. I absolutely love that cover. And, the, oh, and this one, I think, is, it's a really cool Tyler Kirkham. I think that's a 1 in 25 or 1 in 15. So that's actually kind of a hard one to get. So I'm actually really happy with that pack. That was cool. Oh, Indie Key Comics. I did not know. I will look at it. I will, um, I really don't know what uh, category it was. Like, I don't remember seeing your name, but I also wasn't really paying attention either that much. <laughs> uh, the only thing I was looking for is to make sure Tina won. I don't even know if I noticed my name at first. I think to Tina told me, and then one other person told me, and then, like, I noticed it. Uh, okay, we got, um, this might be 36, so this was a cheap pack. Yeah, I... Uh, exactly. I want to talk comics. I don't like getting into the drama so much. Occasionally, I might hint on it. But no, I love Street Fighter comics. I buy them all the time. And I uh, a lot of them are actually quite valuable. I'm just the specific reason why I don't like this one and they give it often in these packs is it's a loot crate exclusive, which means they printed like one to 200,000 of them. So this is a dollar bin book. It's not a rare one, it doesn't really have much value. I so I don't get excited for that just because it's cheap and easy to get. I like I'm buying big I'm paying eight dollars a book trying to get rare books or exclusives or things I couldn't get that's not overproduced. Otherwise, I love Street Fighter. Street Fighter is such an amazing game. And I, you know, I collect all kinds of Street Fighter. I love Chun Li. I collect all the Chun Li stuff I can get. Uh this is a beautiful Captain Marvel number one. Uh Spider-Man Unforgiven number one. That's a cool cover. Really like that one. Oh, this is fun. This pack's a little bit different than the other ones. Darth Vader, black, white, and red. That one's really cool. Uh, this is one duplicate, but that's like a really nice duplicate. So I think I get 10, 15 out of that. Uh Smallville Lantern number three. I feel like that's a cheaper book. Uh oh, a really beautiful Tyler Kirkham. It looks like it must attach to another issue, but that's a cool virgin variant. And uh signed ninja funk number one. Okay, that was actually a fun pack. And okay, two more packs, and I know one was a ceiling. All right, so that's fifty-three bucks. Fifty-three bucks. So that was uh, like ten dollars an issue. Let's see what we got. We got House of Slaughter number one, uh, Wonder Girl number one. Beautiful cover. These are all duplicates, though. So I'll, I'm gonna have a lot of. One reason why I wanted to show all these was to pull out the duplicates. I do really like this issue, but this is a cheaper issue for the. Like I don't like seeing the one the three dollar books in these packs. Uh, the Virgin Red Goblin, though, that's like a $20 book. So, uh, like, overall, the value is... Oh, this one's double signed. Who signed? Oh, Alex Rigel signed that one. Oh, that's cool. So, uh, you, usually, it's just JPG signing since he owns the Spider-Man booth. So, this is his comic, if you want to know. The Spider-Man booth, the owner of the Spider-Man booth created Ninja Funk. It's his comic. So, that's why I'm buying these packs because I'm trying to get the rare versions of his comic. And some of the Ninja Funks are only available in these packs. That's why I'm buying them. Uh, but that's cool. I don't think I see Alex Rigel signing so often, so that's actually really neat. Oh, that's cool. I'm glad you guys are all signing up in DK Comics. I appreciate that. They sort of feel like Christmas. Okay, so that was the last pack, except for this pack I paid 41 bucks for, and it came in a big old box. So let's go through that one. This is going to be the most fun one, I think. So I do want... You know, when you hit these ceiling packs, I think they're cool because you get really rare, weird things. It's like a big, thick pack, so you get a bunch of books. And uh, although these might be some duplicates from the other pack. But this one I'm looking for. Like, this final boss, you might not be able to get that easily. So really awesome David Mack. I love David Mack covers. Uh, so that's so I will have some duplicates, but I am holding on to all these Ninja Funks because I have high hopes for the series. I think eventually they will do, like, a show or a cartoon or something. Ninja Funk number one, I think that's like a 1 in 15 or 1 in 25. The uh, David Mack Bowls Playground, I love that. I think that's also a ratio. I believe that's a Bill Sienkiewicz, uh 300, maybe not. Not sure, but it's a gorgeous cover. Essentia number 17. And then another 17 issues. Um, this really awesome, uh, what you call, Last Ronin Virgin Variant. Uh, Mark Bro. So there's a lot. I have a lot of duplicates here. Oh, this is a cool Carnage. I don't have that one yet. Uh, another David Nakayama Virgin variant. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy number two. I think that's a ratio variant. Really awesome Cosmic Ghost Rider cover. 
Uh, Scarlet Witch number three. This one is signed by Steve Orlando. Oh, this is really fun too. The Foil Amazing Spider-Man 121. I think that's like a $20 book. And then um, I, I honestly, uh, the only Ziggy thing I got this week was at a garage sale. The lady gave me that one for free. Um, I like Whatnot. Whatnot, you can get free stuff. You can get really good deals. The only problem with Whatnot is you can overspend a lot of money just because there's so many great deals. Whatnot is really a discount place. Whatnot is a place to buy things undervalued. Maybe not necessarily what you want just because it's it's slow to go through stuff because you're, people are running auctions where they show one item, goes for 30 seconds, then another item. So it's not as fast as like digging through a box. But there's many times where I get just absolutely spectacular deals on Whatnot. Uh, and then also in this pack was this book, which I don't know anything about. It's a big, chunky, mega, big... Oh, I lost my uh, background. Uh, MetaZoo number 298, signed by Alfonso Pancho Alvarez. I just thought it looked really cool. And, like, I don't know what it is, but it's fun to get this big old 98 book for... Um, you know, where I win this pack? Like 41 bucks. So I got all that for $41. That was actually quite a good score. And it's it's stuff like that that kind of pays for the packs I overpaid for. That's why I'm trying to win the ceiling packs more often so that my overall cost per comic is just cheaper. Because when you get a pack like that, that's like a four or $500 value. Yeah, what, not, what I like about what not is um, with Winter Funk is that a comic book dealer really had dreams of doing his own comic book and because of whatnot they helped him publish it i think that is awesome i don't i know some people don't like whatnot and so they they kind of negative against ninja funk but i like the idea of someone's dream coming true and i like supporting it i think that's amazing i think it's super cool and i, I like it i think it's a fun read i you know i gotta read some more of the issues but so far i've enjoyed it uh okay so that's all the spider-man booth stuff uh, we got some more Adventure Time, and then we have two long boxes of just random. Oh, Scout 19 has a flexi insert. I'll have to look to see if it's in there. If if you saw if I got it. Uh, yeah, but those are fun. I like those packs. They're a little bit expensive, but I, I just get addicted to trying to win those ceiling packs so I can get the really rare version of their books. That's the main reason why I'm buying them. Okay, I'm gonna move this box over. Okay, we got one more big old Adventure Time box. And then we have two long boxes of just random. I really don't know what it is. It might be cheap stuff. It might be awesome stuff. I'm not sure. Tina, when I was at the garage sale too, um, with this Siggy, they had a whole bag of uh, costume jewelry brooches. I looked. No, they were all just like kind of simple flowers and nothing really jumped out. But I was just double checking just in case I saw something that looked really awesome for you. So, well, board, why don't you just try to, um, if you haven't bought anything yet, just try to win something. Win, win, you know, win a couple books. See how you like the experience. Once you win something, then it makes it a little bit more fun to buy, I think. Okay, so, all right, this was one, two, three, four, five lots of Adventure Time. I paid $267 total. So, I think it's like two or three dollars a book. Not 100% sure. So, we're just go we're going to go through these. And they're um, just a lot more... Like, I was trying to find lots of stuff that I didn't think I have yet. So the flip side, I think I had all the A covers, but I wasn't sure if I had the um, the B covers or the Virgin Variants. That's the main thing I was trying to find. These really fun Virgin Variants. I love that one. That was such a cool cover. Uh, yeah, I don't think I had a lot of those Virgin Variants. Uh, number three, beautiful cover. Number three, again, beautiful cover. Uh, really awesome Virgin Variant. Love that one absolutely love that one too that one is awesome and i think a lot of these again are like one in 15 one in 25 variants uh L lumpy space princess is one of allison's favorite characters number four uh number four b <laughs> what not is kind of like a drug deal i like it though i i like I've last month when I was trying to just win, I did put a lot of hours into it. But I won like five hundred dollars worth of comic books. Like you can get free stuff, and then like I buy so many great deals as well. Uh, okay, we got uh, this beautiful Marceline Virgin variant. Absolutely love that cover. Uh, this really fun San Diego Comic Con cover. Uh, get a sketch blank cover. Uh, Fiona and Cake Virgin variant. That's super cool. Marceline. Number four, number five, big fan of Marceline, the character. Number six, 
Uh, this is... I think this is the first appearance of Fiona and Cake, but this is the Dynamic Forces signed version. So this one is signed by Emily Warren, who did the cover. Absolutely love that. That one is awesome. I think that's a... Um, you know, I think this one directly costs like $23. I think that's undervalued. Uh, and then this one is also Dynamic Forces. This one is signed by... Uh, Meredith Gran, I think she must have done the cover. Uh, this bag looks messed up, but the book looks good. Uh, more flip size. So yeah, these were several different lots. It wasn't just one lot. I think I won like five or six different auctions from them. Okay, let's go there. Okay, these. I need to make an Adventure Time box. The one thing is after I do these big haul videos, it takes me like two hours to clean up. <laughs> it's a lot of comics to do all at once. Uh, okay, we got uh, Fiona and Cake. I forget the number, but this is also from the first series. Uh, this is the really cool Super Mario 3 homage. I love that one. Uh, it's a 1 in 25, it says. Uh, Fiona and Cake, number 2. Number 2. So that's the B cover, A cover. Uh, the Get a Sketch Convention exclusive. This is a reprint of her first appearance. Uh, this is the Emerald City Comic Con... Limited to 500 copies, I believe. Yeah, limited to 500 copies. This is her first appearance. These were like eight, ten dollars each, something like that. So I bought both of them for the first appearance of a character that got her own show. Like, I, I just, I feel like these are so. Under I'm surprised that they haven't jumped in value because of the show. The first two episodes are really good. Um. So this is a second print of her first appearance. I don't think I had the second print yet. Uh, this is the cover A first appearance of Fiona and Cake. This is the one in 30 first appearance of Fiona and Cake. So this one, this is like my third or fourth copy. I'm just buying these like crazy at the moment. Uh, this is the one in 25 first appearance. Uh, this is the cover B first appearance. I don't like the art on this one so much. Uh, Marceline, number one. Love that cover. That's awesome. Hey, Axios, how are you? Uh, so browning and tanning used to not really affect the grades at all, I think. They've been hitting it harder, so bad browning or tanning could knock it down a grade or two. So if you think it looks like a 7, it could go down to a 6 or a 5.5. Five, something like that. Uh, Marceline Virgin variant. Marceline number 1, the awesome convention variant. I'm trying to find all the obscure limited uh, covers as well. I'm I'm just I want a complete collection of all the Adventure Time comics. I think I'm currently at a long box of all different covers. So I'm going to buy a lot of these lots, sell off the duplicates, try to make a profit or break even, and then keep all the ones I need for the set. Because I do want all of them. But I don't want to go out of my way and buy them one at a time. I kind of want it to pay for itself. I love that. That's a really awesome... Um, it might be a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. Uh, number one, that's an awesome cover. Absolutely love that. Yeah, they're super fun. I love Adventure Time. Adventure Time to me is such a fun... A uh, cartoon. Uh, okay, so this is the one in twenty-five virgin variant. I really, I feel like these one in twenty-fives are so undervalued. Issue number four, Fiona and Cake. Uh, number four. This is the one in twenty-five. Number four. So I do like all these ratio variants. This is, I think, number two or three. That's number three. Number three. Man, these covers are absolutely fun, though. Absolutely love them. So I think we're a little bit, there we go, a little bit crooked. So yeah, I think I ended up paying about $3 an issue on all these. There's a few that I paid a little bit more for, a few that I paid a little bit less. Uh, yeah, so last week, uh, Max just released the first few episodes of the new season of Fiona and Cake. So Fiona and Cake has her own new series now. Um, I do have to say it's a continuation, though, because it has, you know, Fiona and Cake was an alternate universe version that was written by the Ice King. Their universes might collide a little bit in this series. So it's really good, actually. There are a million, but the print runs are really, really low. So I looked it up. Fiona and Cake, number one, it said that there were 7,500 issues printed. When they, like SMA 7,500. So the one in 30 ratio means they probably only made 400 of them. So for that fact, I'm collecting them now while they're still cheap because they're such low print run that if any Adventure Time fans really start catching on that the comics are rare, I think some of them will go up. But there are a lot. There, there's I Like I said, I have 300 different. And a lot, they're just so many. Oh, I love this cover. That's an awesome Emily Warren cover. Uh, so I'm trying to buy them all now and I'm kind of hoarding the issue, the first appearances 
just because I think they're just undervalued. Oh, this is a San Diego Comic-Con cover. That's why I didn't recognize that one. Uh, this is number 6, 1 in 25 ratio. This one was uh, number 6 to 1 in 15 ratio. Uh, regular number 6. Uh, the colors are beautiful. And I love what I love about the Adventure Time comics is they have so many different artists do the covers. So you have the traditional covers that look like the cartoon, but then you have all these really fun, more creative covers that go with it. I, I just I have so much fun with these. For years I've been buying it like this where I'll buy lots, pay two or three dollars, sell them for like five bucks a piece. Slowly sell them, but I try to break even. I'm gonna try to do that a lot more, but I'm gonna like what I used to do is I used to try to buy a hundred. Sell enough to break even, then buy another 100. So I'd wait to break even. Uh, this time, I'm just going to buy as much as I can because I really feel like in the next five years, these are going to be old enough that people uh, that grew up, like the people that are 10 years old when Adventure Time first came out 10 years ago, they're 20 now. So they're in college. Give it 10 more years when they're 30 and they're having kids, they're going to be really nostalgic for this stuff. So I have a feeling in the next five to 10 years, Adventure Time is going to pop. So I don't mind. And if it doesn't pop, I've sold them well enough in my shop that will make a profit just selling them outright without them going up in value. But I also, I love Adventure Time. So I'm trying to get them all, all the ones I can get that I don't have. Uh, number five is beautiful. Number oh, I love that cover too. That cover is gorgeous. Yeah, exactly. The, uh, the comics, just, they look nice. They look like episodes, right? I mean, they're not, they're fun. Like, the interior is fun. Like, I feel like if you like Adventure Time, it's definitely worth checking out the comics and reading them and, and enjoying them, right? Like, I think they're fun. I think they're super cool. And if you don't like Adventure Time, you can completely ignore the fact that I'm buying these like crazy. Because <laughs> it means they'll continue to be cheap. I really don't want them to explode in value yet because I want to... Continue to buy up all the rare limited to 500 issues I don't have for like five bucks. I have a feeling some of these are going to get to the point where they're going to start being like 20, 30, 50, 100 dollars and I'm not able to buy them anymore. And that'll be kind of a sad day. So I'm hoping before that I have a complete set. Uh, okay, so the last little handful. This was just the candy caper issues, I believe. Like these, this lot was 23 for like 50 bucks. I paid like 250 each. Which I feel like is a steal because the Virgin variants are like 1 in 15, 1 in 25. These should be $10, $15 issues. Absolutely love that cover. That's the uh, limited edition Comic-Con. San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. So that one they might have done like 500 to 1,000. Candy Capers, number one. Uh, number one. And also, I've always been a fan of food people. So like as a kid and like in my early 20s, I would collect little PVC figures if it was like an apple with a face or or a donut with a face. So I do like food people characters in general. So I like I absolutely love these. Uh, this is limited edition. Not sure the ratio on that one, but that one's awesome. I love that. It's a poor pancake person about to be eaten. Uh, I love this one too. The zombie donut is attacking the candy keeper guy. Uh, candy keepers two, number two. Uh, fun virgin variant. I love the candy corn person there. Uh, this is a fun one where um, there's like a candy fin. So I guess somehow related to the Ice King. Candy Capers 3. Love this forest cover. I uh, love this cover. This cover is absolutely gorgeous. Love that one. Uh, not sure the artist on that one, but that one's fun. Uh, number 406. Number 406. Uh, Candy Capers. This one looks like a fun old like mystery novel. Number five. Uh, number five. That one's fun. Uh, Virgin variant or minimal trade variant. That one's super awesome. Another minimal trade. That one's awesome as well. I love that. Like these ones are super cool because I feel like the price I paid it was a steal on those. And number six. Okay, so those are super fun. I think that's all the Adventure Time I have. Uh, so, no, it's not lazy writing at all. Fiona and Cake is absolutely amazing because Fiona and Cake is the Ice King's fan fiction. So, if you if you don't know Adventure Time, so who so the Ice King, every there's only been a few issues, or in the original cartoon, uh, Fiona and Cake are only in a couple episodes. I, I love the episodes. They're super fun. So, what they are is they're the Ice King, the main villain's fan fiction. He writes this fan fiction about the um the main his main adversary Finn and and Jake 
but he f- gender swaps it and he admits he says no i'm not copying you at all and it's super 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 funny and so the new series is a lot of fun and it's like the ice king is not the ice king anymore because of what happened in the original series it's actually really really good writing it's not just a gender swap it's not replacing it's it's a fictional universe within the main universe right so it's a really really fun series i love it i like if you haven't watched it then you just think it's like um you know like whenever they just randomly gender swap people i think it's gender swapping in the perfect because every single character is gender swapped in that universe You know, like, uh, Marceline is Marshall. Um, the uh, Bubblegum is, uh, I forget uh, his name in that universe. But yeah, it's super, super fun. I like it. I, I think it works really well. First two episodes, absolutely loving it. Uh, Sausage Party was funny. I liked Sausage Party. A little bit grotesque, a little bit uh, par- potty humor, but I loved it. Okay, I, uh, I'm i having a lot of fun. So I have two long boxes of books still left over from... Um, Push pull and Godzillions from uh, like a month ago. So we're just we're gonna go through these boxes. I don't know if they're just boring boxes or what, but let's keep going. I don't want to quit yet. Don't want to quit at all. Okay. Long box. Uh, yeah, the uh, Social Party is probably X-rated. Uh, not X-rated, uh, R-rated. It's R-rated because it's like kind of sexual, kind of naughty, kind of... It's super funny, though. All right, I'm keeping it going. All right, we have a long box here. I'll show you the long box. I don't know if it's just like a bunch of boring Marvel and DC stuff, but I'm having a lot of fun tonight. So I, I want to get through these boxes just so I can sort them and get them out of here. And uh, I just I don't want to quit, but I might just go through them really quick. Just to, uh, oh, okay, you know what? We got Outlanders 14. Okay, these might be, yeah, it's R-rated. It feels a little X-rated, but it's R-rated. Uh, I did not, I thought this was Marvel and DC stuff. If we have indie stuff in here, I'm actually going to enjoy these boxes a lot more. And I don't think Sean and Jason got me number 14. Okay, wow, okay, upgrade, upgrade. I This is going to be a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. Uh, Apache Dick number two, that's fun. Oh, okay, we have a... Bro- okay. Wow, I thought these were uh, uh, just junk books. Like, I didn't even show them the last time because I was getting bored of what I was showing, but this is, like, amazing. Strange Adventures, uh, Cat and Mouse, number six. Uh, Larry Niven, Arm. Okay. Uh, Cat and Mouse, number three. Cat and Mouse, number five. Larry Niven, Arm. So, just a lot of indie stuff. I thought it was going to be more like this. Like, I like The Punisher, but, you yeah. know... So th- this is uh, left over from when I bought the 3,000 comics for $300 from um, Godzillion Comics. We had gone through, it was 10 boxes, I think. Was it 10? No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was 10 boxes. We went through eight of them, and then uh, we hit like a Marvel box. I was really, really, really... Oh, hey, Eric, how are you? So, yeah, um, I got these from... Uh, Mike, though, I, I got these from Godzilla. So I didn't, this batch I didn't get from Push Pull, but yeah, oh, that's super cool. You're, you're here in the right time because this is my leftovers from the last batch I bought. Or Eric, did I buy these? Did I buy the 300 books for $300? I mean, the 10 boxes for three. I forget. <laughs> my brain is drawing a blank. Uh, oh, I'm sorry you had a bad week, Ted. I, I hope you could just relax and feel a little better. Um, having a bad week sucks. Okay, so punish. Okay, I, I want to see more. Um, um, hey, Mark. I, I'm hoping there's more. Oh, but this is kind of cool too. We have some Bronze Age uh, Superman. Oh, this is cool. Cobra number five. Okay, I thought this box was kind of like mm, whatever, but now that I'm looking at it, like so far the first handful is actually really cool. I'm gonna have if my fun hour or two hanging out with you guys can make your day or your week a little bit better so they were both your books okay i i really forget because i know um mike sold me a bunch of stuff the one week you weren't there i just don't remember if this was this or that or not but uh yeah no i appreciate you guys i i uh I, I missed your last batch of stuff or was it uh it was mike's stuff i think 
Yeah, I think these were uh, from Mike. And they're just left over. But yeah, I uh, I can't wait to buy more stuff from you guys. <laughs> uh, okay, New Titans number 52. That's an awesome cover. Champions Annual 1. Adventure Book number 2. Um, Gamma Rodders number 1. That looks fun. Death's Head number 2. Uh, but yeah, honestly, I sometimes I have... Uh, uh, I have a bad week all the time too. We all we're human. We all have bad weeks, right? You know, mixing up working together sounds like awesome because it's, doing the job all yourself can be a little bit overwhelming. You got Nicholas. You got ten more of what? I don't even know. But how are you? Um, but yeah, no, I sometimes I have a bad week and just like I do these videos because I really enjoy hanging out with you guys. And I really, uh, it gives me joy just to enjoy comics. Oh, this one looks cool. Twilight Avenger. What a cool cover. Uh, interior is pretty cool too. Like nice line work with a little airbrushing shading here and there. That's a fun comic book. So yeah, I um, I appreciate you guys. You know, I appreciate you hanging out and... I, um, oh, 10 more for your channel, Nicholas. Oh, congratulations. You're really close to 100. That's awesome. Very cool. Uh, Equalor, another first. I don't think I had that one yet. Dreadstar 55, I probably have that. Uh, Racer X, uh, Sable, not sure if I have that issue. All right, sweet. I really want to finish my, um, first run. So it's cool to see a few issues that I might need. Terrier's pretty cool on that, like that. A uh, critical mass. Okay. Oh, Nicholas, the system is so messed up right now. I um, I on my main channel, I keep losing like a hundred subscribers a month. It's really demotivating. My walk channel lost two people yesterday. I don't know what YouTube is doing. It's really, really stressful. But you know what? I uh, what helps me is that the fact is I do these live streams and I got seventy of you guys here. Been almost the whole two hours. I um I'm loving this box too. I thought this was more Marvel and DC. I did not realize it was another box of of indie stuff. Absolutely loving this box. Silverback. Uh oh wow! Look at the interior. Wow! I love the coloring on this. It's just really strong purples and reds and pinks. Wow, that is quite a book. Oh, can't show that. Okay. Oh, uh, Manhunter Twenty One. Uh, Excalibur 15. Shazam number 4? Yo, that's pretty cool. Uh, Grimdrak 68. I probably have that one, but that's still cool. Samariner 4. I really... I I don't know why I didn't go through these yet. I thought it was just Marvel DC stuff. I thought it was a, a much boring box, but this is cool. Strange Tales 15. Solo Avenger 7. Okay, like, I thought it was more like this kind of stuff, but even this kind of stuff is okay, because that's really sellable from a shop. Uh, Warlocks number two. That cover is fantastic. I absolutely love that. Uh, interior artwork's okay. Not the best. But overall, it's a pretty cool looking comic book. Uh, Doctor Fate number three. Uh, Wasteland not, number 15. Green Arrow 15. Checkmate 12. Secret Origins 37. All right, so this is more of what I thought this whole box was. So this is kind of like, yeah, it's okay. But I'm not as excited for this stuff. Just because it's so... It's so similar. It's so, um, you know, I've seen it a thousand times. <laughs> oh, Shazam. Do you need a Shazam 4? Because I'm pretty sure that's a duplicate for me, Jason. If you need a Shazam 4, I can pull it out. Oh, thank you, David. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, we got Justice League 69. Okay, that one is cool. Justice League 70. Yeah, so... Like, this stuff, eh, whatever. It, it is what it is. It's not terrible. Uh, I th think Adam Hughes worked on some of these, though, which is kind of cool. Uh, but then we get Prince Nightmare. So, like, something like this. That's, uh, what publisher is that? I don't even know the publisher. Uh, oh, and this Terrier is, like, really fun watercolor colored. The line work kind of sucks, but the overall look is cool. Uh... Book one, ARG publisher. I don't even know if I have any ARG books. Okay, I'll put I'll put it to the side. Uh, it Wasteland might be a duplicate. It's one of those things you might have to help me sort, figure it out. Uh, Rob Bob Steele Western. 
Okay, it's like a reprint or something. Shazam 24. Uh, E-Man from Comic... I don't know if I have any Comic... Oh, oh uh, E-Man. That's interesting. Boris the Bear. See, look. This has stuff that you guys were picking out for me, but other issues. <laughs> this is kind of cool, actually. Uh, so, Jason Finestone Colors and uh, my friend Sean. He, he's uh, Cajun Black on here. They're the guys who put the collection together for me. Which It, it was such a great selection. You guys did a fantastic job. Uh, I Love Lucy... Justice League Quarterly, uh, Thunder Agents, number one, pretty fun, uh, Night Streets, kind of like a crazy looking look, Terrier looks pretty cool, uh, Sinbad, Mighty Thor Spectacular, Shazam, eight, actually, it's really cool, there's just, uh, excuse me, there's some Shazams in there, I know, it feels like it's all the issues you guys missed out on, <laughs> Except for this stuff. This is the filler that you passed over. <laughs> Wonder Man 14. So like stuff like this, Wonder Man and Firestar. I just it's so hard to sell. This is the kind of stuff you have to kind of bulk out at a quarter. So um Yeah, no, the, the whole box that they put together was absolutely amazing. Forgotten Realms number six. I like I think I had fun. I know Sean had I mean I, I didn't I had a blast going through the box. I think Sean had fun and I know Jason had fun. So the, I think it was fun, fun, fun for everyone. Uh, beautiful stories for ugly children. That's kind of cool. Excalibur, Whisper. Uh, not sure if I need that one or not. I'm pretty sure I have most of them, but I might be missing one or two. Uh, okay, I need another empty box to put these into as I go through. Them. All right. Oh, I should. I'm really bad at looking for them, but um. I'm look, uh, taking a quick look. I don't see any lines through them. And I, Was Mark Jeweler in anything that wasn't Marvel and DC? Or is it just Marvel and DC for the Mark Jewelers? Uh, is it? I mean, I, I love Dungeons and Dragons, so I have been collecting them for a while. I haven't read them, though. If Forgotten Realms is one of your favorite comics, I'll have to read it. I'll have to check it out. Okay, look at that. Got that. I have to do a lot of. I know I, I go through so many books that I don't have a lot of time to actually look for these fine details of collectability. But I do keep one of everything, so if it's a unique book to my collection, I'll keep it whether it has it or not. But I'm sure every once in a while I must sell a Mark Jeweler or something that I just didn't realize was one, or I didn't catch it. Um, someone told me I forgot what. Uh, was it you, Nicholas, that told me about the star? Because I've been looking for that lately. I haven't found any with the star yet, but I've been looking. It might have only been a, um, like a, a West Coast thing, and maybe not. Because I was at um, Streetside Anthony, and he showed me a stack of 40 Mark Jewelers, and none of them had a star on it. So maybe in the New York City area, we didn't have stars on our Mark Jewelers. So I don't know. But I've been looking. I've been trying to figure it out. Oh, just of the year of one. That's cool. That's like a $5 book. Uh, Huntress. I'm more excited because I could sell it. And <laughs> Not because I need it. I probably have it a hundred times over. Yeah, a lot of this stuff I probably have already because it's just really common. So I, I just don't get too excited over it. And it's not uh, like this, maybe a dollar bin on a lot of this stuff. Maybe two bucks for like a cooler artist on the cover. A Hawk World, Firestorm, Justice League. So I guess this is more of what I've been, why I didn't go through the box because I thought it was more of this stuff, which I, I don't hate it. I just, that it's so common that I see it all the time. Yeah, I, I believe, but Mark Jewelers were only, Tina in general, Mark Jewelers were only sold at Mary Tillery vases. I, now I'm saying vases. I can't talk, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, someone told me that to look for the stars. Oh, I love ElfQuest. I've been collecting ElfQuest for years. I try to pick up everything I don't have ElfQuest related. I do really, I love the artwork on it too. Hudson and Poole, not Mark. Okay, I'm a little lost right now, but that's okay. I don't mind being lost. I just like information being thrown at my face so I can remember. But yeah, no, I'm pretty sure all Mark Jewelers were in bases. I don't know if they weren't. I think they were all sold just in military bases. I think that was where they came from. But I have a feeling that in, uh, like, Tina, by where you are, I think that's where they stamped them, in California and in Washington State. I think on the East Coast they might not have... At least I, everyone I've talked to, I haven't found any with stars here. But I've seen star ones on eBay, and I looked where people were selling them, and most of them were on the West Coast. 
Cat and Mouse, number one. Oh, that looks kind of cool. I like the uh, interior artwork. Cover not so much, but the interior is great. Uh, Elementals, number 12. That's cool. Whisper 37. I do like getting the first stuff just in case I need it. Yeah, no, it's easy to look when um they're not bagged and boarded, but when they are bagged and boarded, I, it's a little bit harder for me. Uh, Lensman, Hero Alliance, Nexus. This is, like, if I could buy long boxes of this type of stuff for, like, $20 or $30 a long box, I'd buy them all day long because I really like this stuff. It's okay. I like being confused. <laughs> it's fun because <laughs> maybe I'll learn something new. Uh, X Mutants, number seven. It's good to learn new stuff. Jack Bradbury. Cartoony comic book. Uh, Unicorn Island. So this is probably an ElfQuest related, I think. Or, or it's warp graphics, at least. Uh, it looks pretty cool interior, though. It looks... It kind of has an elfquest kind of look to it. All right, that looks really awesome. I love that. Uh, and then here's an ElfQuest issue, number four. Oh, yeah, that one's gorgeous. Uh, Zooniverse, I, I really want to complete my Eclipse run, but I think I only have four or five hundred different Eclipse books. So I definitely, I need about five or six hundred more, I think. Zooniverse, uh, these are super cool. I don't think I had those. Yeah. Um, The Last Generation, number two. It's an interesting looking book. Interior looks, well, the cover looks really cool, but kind of a little bit awkward. Uh, interior line work looks gorgeous, though. Uh, Renegade Press Strata number four. I like in the Renegade Press stuff. Uh, the last generation with like this big warrior bear. Uh, interior looks pretty cool though. Like th that. This looks interesting. I like that. Uh, the Realm. Interesting coloring decision. Interesting looking book. Uh, Night Streets. She's like beating up the criminals. They're in all kind of like cyberware with a giant cat. Interesting. Azuniverse number six. All right, back to the DC stuff. Okay, DC stuff. I'm going to spend more time looking at the indies than the DC Marvel. Unless you guys like DC Marvel. It's not that I don't like it, but it just it's, it kind of bores me because it's so common and I see it everywhere. I see it in every dollar bin I look at. Okay, let's get another big old stack here. All right, I got to turn my box sideways because it's starting to get a little bit too floppy. A little bit too floppy. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I'm just flipping it sideways so that, that they don't flop over and mend the spines. Uh, Darkhawk 26. Uh, Mr. Monster. Mr. Monster always looks pretty cool. Um, the New Humans. Sable. I actually don't know if I have that one. If I get some first stuff I don't have, I'm really happy because I think I'm in the, the final legs of things i need to find and i would love to finish that run a uh, cage three twilight avenger number four that looks cool i like just a gas mask dude kind of a cool design interior artwork is so so but still cool iron man badger i do like the cover on that one uh coloring is pretty cool uh liberty project southern knights all right superman Shadow, Warriors of Plasm, Action Comics. Uh, I don't know. I kind of like an anthropomorphic unicorn. Uh, I don't know if it's naughty inside, though. I'm going to look. I'm going to look. I'm going to look. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, interior artwork looks awesome. There is some canoodling going on in here between a dragon and a unicorn that you probably don't want to show your kids. Um, but uh, I like the art in general. The art in general looks really, really fun. That's a fun comic book. I kind of like stuff like that. Uh, Checkmate. Crossroads. So that's another one of these. I'm looking for these first, um, the thicker trade paperbacks. Because I think that's what a big bulk of what I'm missing. Uh, Dreadstar 42. Whisper 24. Okay. That's actually, this box is turning out to be really awesome. Really happy with it so far. Okay. All right, next back. I, I do like anthropomorphic animal indie books. I don't know. They're kind of fun. Kind of like them. Please, I, I, you know, because as a kid, I liked, uh, you know, like Howard the Duck. And I just liked animal people in general. I liked movies like The Secret of Nim. So I liked having 
animals with, uh, you know, personalities and stuff. Um, is it, is it, I don't know if it's mad. I don't, I don't oh, I'm, I'm like 10 seconds behind you, so I'm not 100% sure. Uh... No, I th I think it's just it's not Madame Xanadu. It's its own thing. It's not a DC Universe thing, and it just uh, it, I'm assuming since it's sort of uh, adult nature, it probably has a bit more value. The adult nature books tend to have a higher value because they're just low print and they're hard to get. Oh, you have a bunch of the Crossroads. Okay, very cool. I um I I don't know what I have. I might have a lot of them myself, Jason, but I also might be missing a few. I mean, I feel like I'm missing a few. Because I know when I looked on the list, th that was the kind of stuff that I didn't think I had. Uh, Ventures into the unknown. Like, I don't know. It's kind of awful, but kind of awesome at the same time. I like the idea of the image. I like the colors of the image. But the line work is very, very sketchy. Very, very weak. I want. I kind of want to look inside, though. kind of want to see what it is. Oh, then on the back cover, there's like a, a Frank Frazetta artwork. So it feels like this comic could be amazing. Uh, interior, it looks like maybe older reprints. Like, I actually kind of like the interior artwork. Uh, yeah, this is a Herbie. I know that's a Silver Age comic. So yeah, this is probably just uh, reprints of some older stuff. Uh, she was an attractive star of the 70s. That's for sure. Infinity Inc. number 40, Teen Titans 35. Love that cover. What a gorgeous cover. I don't think that cover ever caught my attention, but I'm looking at it now. I'm like, wow, that is that is a cover. This came out in 87. So comics at the time were 75 cents. So again, this is one of those books that were like double price. And I, you know, I had, I don't know, $10 a week to spend. So I'd rather get 12 comics instead of six. So I always balked at it, but now as an adult, I just see that. You're getting way better production quality out of these. And there's just something about it I really, really enjoy. That is super cool. Uh, Harry Harrison Death World. Uh, interior looks pretty interesting. I like that. Ooh, Planet of the Apes. Do love the old uh, Planet of the Apes stuff. Alienation. I absolutely love this movie and show when they were out in the 80s. All right, that is super cool. And these are uh, these. This is turning into a really, really fun book. I mean, a uh, box of books. I really, really like this. I can tell my t brain is getting tired though, because the wrong words keep coming out of my mouth. <laughs> I can tell I've been doing it a little bit too long. When I start saying the wrong thing, I'm like saying uh, book instead of box. I'm saying bloodstone instead of bloodshot. I'm just saying the wrong things, but I'm having a fun time. All right, Warlord. All right, I'm gonna go through the DC and Marvel stuff a little bit faster. If you guys see something you really... Oh, that's cool, though. We have uh, DC Comics Presents 40 with Metamorpho. That is really neat. Uh, Captain Adam, Adam number one. That might have a little bit of value. Uh, the Argonauts. Eternity. I don't know if Eternity books catch my attention as much because I think the artwork is just kind of a little bit weaker. Maybe a little bit less production quality. Uh, G.I. Joe is always good for my shop. Racer X. Uh, Rust number three. Uh, the Adams Family episode guide. That's an interesting book. Uh, Plasmer. That's like, this is... This is put out by Marvel. Like, who was buying this? Like, this is... Uh, it's 93. So this is when all the artists went to Image. And so this is what they were putting out. <laughs> Look how awful this is. <laughs> Uh, coloring is still really good, though. Like, like Image didn't take the colorist, I guess, because the coloring looks really good, but the line art looks kind of like... I don't know. I don't know. Okay, Captain America. Uh, I mean, did you want the Argonauts? Is this something that you wanted? Because I, I can... I, um... I mean, I, I can, I, well, I kind of want it if I don't have it, but I'm not like totally, uh, you know, addicted to having it. Uh, so Rogue Trooper. So this is a quality comics. I think the quality comics were like, I like the production quality of this. This came out in, 
Uh, I can't see the date, but I'm pretty sure this was like early 80s, like 82 to 84. And uh, I'm trying to see any kind of date on here. I don't see any date, but I kind of like the production quality of it. It's it's kind of weirdly printed, though, but I like the coloring. But it was $1.50 when comics were probably like 60 cents. Oh, is that what is that what you're saying? Okay, I got I don't I didn't get your joke. I totally went over my head, but I get it now. <laughs> Okay, joke away. Uh, uh, any comics? Are you leaving or was Tina leaving? I'm not sure. Uh, Ultraverse. Okay, Ultraverse, Teen Titans. All right, I'm going to blast through these without talking too much. Or not not about each because my uh, my voice is going and my brain is definitely gone. Uh, ooh, Outlander's number one. I got a duplicate. I didn't need it, Jason. I had it already. I didn't even know. <laughs> Uh, Ultraverse, Ultraverse, Ultraverse. Okay. Ultraverse doesn't get me too excited either. Okay, what we have? We have Warlord. Do kind of like the Warlord artwork in general. Like, I just think it looks good. And I like sword and sorcery stuff. Yeah, I, I like Warlord. I need to put it together and read it one of these days. I know I have most of them, so I just have to see what I need. Iron Man, Superman, Racer X, Doc Savage, Legion, a couple of those. I'm not, I should be grabbing the duplicates, but uh, quality comics. Yeah, I kind of like it. It's kind of weirdly printed, like almost low quality, but kind of fun at the same time. All right, a lot of these quality comics. Uh, oh, a nice detective, but I'm surprised they didn't sell it. Oh, I guess it's a little bit water damage. That's probably why they didn't sell it. I was going to say, that should have sold in their dollar bin. Uh, Dark Horse Presents 26. I do like collecting these because they have all kinds of great artists inside them. Uh, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Uh, Thor 402. Oh, the spirit. That is cool. Love Will Eisner stuff. Oh, that is really cool. I, I love sharing this kind of stuff because now maybe there'll be more people enjoying it. I think it's fun to explore the unknown and find the hidden gems. And I, I do. I, I Like on video now, people can watch videos and see all this old stuff. And maybe someone down in 10 years from now will, will spark their interest in something, which would be awesome. Yeah, they're not terrible. You know, they're all like maybe very fine copies. Like they're not, they're in, in relatively good shape. They're not perfect, but they're not, like, torn to shreds. Although now they're all floppy, so I'm probably tearing them to shreds right now as I do this. Here, I'm going to move these because these are too floppy. I love Superman. I grew up with the Christopher Reeves movies, so I've had a, a strong love of Superman since I was a kid. So I collect Superman. I have a ton of Superman Silver Age stuff. I have a little bit of Golden Age stuff. I would love to collect more of the Golden Age stuff. It's just so expensive. Um, but I love seeing that there's more interest because of the James Gunn universe. I think he's going to do a fantastic job with Superman because he's done a great job. Uh, this comic's great. Uh, he's done just a great job with movies in general, like the Guardians of the Galaxy, all the um, DC stuff he's done. I'm really looking forward to his Superman. I think it'll be better than Man of Steel. Jason, I mean, that's awesome. Like, I'm, I don't consider myself an expert on indie stuff. I just love exploring the world of comics in a way that I as new. I want new comics in my life every day. I, you know, I've been around comics all my life since I was like eight, maybe. So for almost 40 years of comics, I've done the Marvel and DC stuff. I just, I like finding new interesting things. And I know my love of sci-fi and weird indies was really strong in the early 2000s because of how much I was not happy with Marvel and DC after they went bankrupt and everything just went to trash. So I really enjoy just weird different comics. It's fun. But then I, you know, when my son was born, I kind of got back into uh, Marvel and DC again because I was at the same time like the Avenger movie came out. And so like because of that, I also gained my love of the stuff that I grew up with. So it's just like I love all comics. Uh, comics are expensive, David. <laughs> but no, it's cool. I love that you love Deadpool, but you really weren't a Deadpool comic guy. Right, you were a guy who loved the character Deadpool. You loved his movies, 
But now you're finding the love of his origins, where he came from, the comics. I think that's amazing. I think that's super cool. There's so many people that love comic characters from the movies and shows that don't love the comics. And I think you should. Yeah, no, I... I um, so growing up, I was a Marvel fan. I liked Marvel because it was the street level, like Daredevil, Spider-Man. It was the everyday guy that had superpowers that had to struggle with life a little bit. I liked that. Batman was like a rich guy. I could not, you know... I didn't care. He's like a, a billionaire. It's Donald Trump, the superhero, right? I'm not, like, I didn't care about that. And like Superman is just like super overpowered. So I liked him when I was little, but as I got a little bit older, I'm just like this guy that's like, you have to have a special green rock to defeat him. Otherwise he's super, super, super like, I'm like, whatever. But then when the 89 Batman came out and it was like fun and gritty, I fell in love with Batman. So, and so then like, so I've gone through my waves of, I love at all honestly i love batman i love uh iron man i love like i hated iron man growing up iron man and thor exactly like i didn't care about those characters those are b characters no one cared about them. everyone liked the x-men gi joe comics and um fantastic four basically like all the stuff that got sold off in the bankruptcy in the 90s is the stuff that kids absolutely loved in the 80s wow that's a cool looking uh tank whatever Man, look at how bad... This reproduction is kind of bad, though. It's like a weird fold or something. <laughs> I don't know. Kind of cool, though. Uh, all right, I don't think I can show what's inside there, but that's an interesting cover. But, so, like, I didn't love Thor and, and Iron Man and all those guys until the movies. Then I was like, wow, these are great movies. Guardians of the Galaxy was a joke, right? I hate... The Guardians of the Galaxy, I didn't care about in the 90s. It was a joke comic. It was a cheap comic no one cared about. You could find them in dollar bins and quarter bins and nickel bins. Then the movies came out absolutely brilliant, right? So it just, it really, my love of X-Men is from the comics because they haven't really done, they've done okay movies, but they haven't done great. My love of Deadpool is from the movies though, because um, a comic was kind of trash in the 90s. The original Deadpool, not, like I loved New Mutants growing up, but like the Liefeld New Mutants, uh, not a big fan of that. My love of Swamp Thing was from the 1990s television series. I watched that, absolutely loved it. So that's from that. My love of G.I. Joe is from the toys. So, and then I started getting the comics. And I realized uh, I didn't buy, I bought G.I. Joe in 84 and 82, 84. So 84, I was eight. 85, 86, I really didn't buy any G.I. Joes. 87, I bought a ton of G.I. Joes. I realized I started buying G.I. Joes crazy recently because the, the mid 86 into 87 is when I started reading the comics. So that's when I fell in love with the character. I, I love the, the, the toy line, but then I fell in love with the comics, and then because of the comics, I fell in love with the, the um, toys again. Um, yeah, no, it's so, it's so, so with comics, it's so hard to find, but the cool thing with the comic is you can take a comic like this, you can be like, okay, that's kind of an interesting. Uh, it's, okay, you look inside, you can see like, all right, ah, that looks boring. You don't have to read it, right? You can you can quickly judge a comic if you want to read it. Uh, I kind of like the artwork in Omaha. I don't know if I can show it. Uh, but, you know, anthropomorphic animals. Like, this is something that I might want to read. So then you read it. You can read a couple pages. It's only a dollar bin find, right? You can read it. If you love it, you read more issues. If you don't love it, you're done with it. It's not like TV series where you have to watch half an hour before you decide if you really like it or not. Uh, oh, this, wow. Look at the coloring on this one. Wow, this book is gorgeous. Oh, wow. That's, see, so something like that, Light and Darkness War, I'd read that. That's number four. I might go try to find number one. I'm going to read it just because it looks beautiful. Uh, Nexus Legends. It looks interesting enough. I might try to read that. You know, like, you can, you can do a quick check if you like the artwork, if you like the cover, if you like the subject, like, if you're into kung fu military type stories or if you're into dinosaur writing uh vietnam you might read it or if you're into a uh, psychic spaceman in outer space with a, a couple wishing upon a star you might want to read it right and you can read a page or two and if you hate it you don't have to read the whole thing comics are a lot easier to, to kind of decide what you want to watch compared to netflix, netflix is really annoying because also I get my joy just from comic art. So I can look at the cover. I can look inside that first, you know, date with the comic. Like this comic, I flipped open and I fell in love with it immediately. That alone, that joy, I get out of it. I don't necessarily have to read it to get the full joy. 
I feel like with Netflix, you just like so much stuff. I don't get joy out of it. All right, Ted. <laughs> Take care. Thanks for hanging out. Feel better. Oh, so it's a Jason. It's a cool comic. See, Jason knows how to find a cool comic book, right? See, I just looked at this book. I immediately fell in love with the idea that's a dude riding a dinosaur versus like a Vietnam era helicopter. I thought, okay, that looks very interesting. I flipped it open. I absolutely love the interior artwork. It looks gorgeous. And so, like, I immediately could tell that's something worth looking at. And then Jason, here's Jason already reading it and checking it out. Whereas when I see familiar faces, like if I see Ghost Rider, all right, Ghost Rider, he uses his chain to judge people that have sinned or whatever, done bad things. So he's judging Deathlock. I already know the storyline. I don't have to read it. I already know what's going on, all right? You can read it and you can probably, the interior artwork is also not that interesting. So Ghost Rider is going in and he, it looks like he fights Deathlock and then he judges him. The end. That's a Ghost Rider story. That's pretty much every Ghost Rider book ever. So I, I love Ghost Rider, but I don't necessarily love reading the same similar storyline over and over again. I, I, I want to see. I like seeing stories that kind of progress. I want to see characters die off. I want to see, um, kids grow up. I want to see something that evolves. Oh, okay, Jason. That's so. That's exactly what it is. That sounds kind of amazing, actually. All right, Axios, take care. Sleep well. I've been at it for three hours. This is just going crazy. So I do appreciate any of you guys that have stayed with me so long. <laughs> All right, Thor, like, you know, uh, uh, Asgardian Gar God fights a superpowered villain. And uh, inside, they're fighting, okay? They're fighting. They beat each other up. Lots of energy. They beat each other up some more. Lots of energy, more energy, more cosmic, more fighting. And then a bunch of spaceships show up. That sounds kind of cool, actually. But, like, you can kind of tell what you're going to get with a Thor. So if you like Thor, yeah, read more Thor. But, like, if you want something new and different, you might check out some of the indies. Yeah, you know, the indie books will... What I like about indies is it's going to give you other stories. Now, some of them suck. Some of them are absolutely terrible. Some of them look pretty and they read terribly. Some of them look awful and they're really fun to read. Indie books are all over the place. So with a Thor book or Iron Man book or Kate, you know what you're getting. You kind of know it's like a mid-tier quality artwork. So it's not terrible, but it's not great. Uh, the read is going to be simple and easy and kind of fun. You can kind of know what you're going to get with the, the Marvel stuff. I, you know, but I, there's only so much of the same thing that I want to watch or read that sometimes I like it to change a little bit, right? I like a little bit of variety. I'm going to pull out, now I'm going to pull out these duplicates later. So we got a whole bunch of this too, which is, this is actually a good book. That's a good like $3 book for my shop. So that's actually good to have. Spider-Man versus the mutants. They team up the fight. Uh, Hobgoblin. Oh, what? Oh, I guess you were supposed to, this is weird. I never opened this. Anyone know what this is? Were people supposed to cut out like a stamp from books in the 90s? Was this supposed to be like the Marvel stamp again in the 90s where you would cut it out and uh, put it in here? That is weird. I, I never opened that. I have no idea what the heck that is. Um, okay, so we got Venture. Venture, I don't know what this is. So I know what I like. I did that was a surprise because I didn't know what it what that was the things. But X Men, you kind of know what you're going to get with the X Men, right? It's going to be them fighting, using their superpowers, fighting together to fight the government or people trying to destroy mutants. That's like every issue. Whereas Venture, I don't know. I've never heard of Venture, so I don't know what this is. So let's judge it by the cover. So we have a space shuttle. So somehow on regular Earth. Someone's in the space shuttle. They're getting involved with some kind of intergalactic war or something because there's an explosion. And this looks like a, maybe a superpowered person, but they have a helmet on. So maybe they're just like an astronaut in space. I don't know what's going on here. But although he looks superpowered up here. So I think he's a superpowered person, but he still needs space gear to breathe in space. And somehow there's a space shuttle. So did he have to take the space shuttle? Or so, like, I'm interested. I'm going to check it out. Uh, I mean, here, he's in a pile of weird goblin aliens. I don't know anything about them. He's punching through. 
And then there's like a Magneto type dude, but I don't know if it's Magneto. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know anything about it. So that mystery that like, I want to know what these green alien dudes are. Bolt. So he has energy. Okay. Bolt. He's fighting the green alien dudes. Like, were, were they taking them down into a, uh, a cave? Like, this is totally fascinating to me. I don't know if it's terrible or great. But the fact that we have a superpowered dude that's been hauled down into some kind of cave by a bunch of little green alien guys to a weird UFO pyramid thing. And then he wakes up or something and he gets, like, superpowered, pissed off. He breaks through the energy chains. He starts fighting. Like, the artwork's kind of awful. But I love just the intrigue of it. Just feels like something different. And then you have a random sexy lady thrown in just for the the course of it. And so, like, I this might be an awful read, but the thing is, it just seems different and interesting. So that's what, like I want to read it. I want to see what it's about. Right? Yeah. I uh, ninety two ninety three. I sold my collection. I started getting back into comics in ninety eight. But I, when I first got back in, I started buying Gru comic books because I missed those. And then I started buying. Um, indies like robert crumb type stuff and sci-fi stuff like mobius stuff and and um uh what, what's uh, uh heavy metal heavy metal magazine like that type of stuff so i really 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 like that so i that's where my love of comics were from like 2000 98 2000 up until about 2010 where i i collected like why the last man futurama comic books mobius comic books any indie that had really awesome artwork um, just interesting other comics. I was just done with, I didn't have any interest in Marvel and DC, but then when my son was born, I just remembered how important comics were to me to help me read because I was dyslexic. So I thought, let me start collecting more comic books that maybe, you know, the, you know, Spider-Man, uh, X-Men stuff that I thought my son might like as he grew up that I could just have around and just enjoy comics with him so that he could ha find fun in the reading. And I kind of refound my love of the Marvel characters that way and at the same time the movies are coming out so when i started getting back to marvel comics it's basically right around when the first avengers movie came out dragonfly so look at this we got the sexy superhero lady i think she's superhero but she has wings so she's a sexy fairy or something she's fighting a mantis so the mantis is trying so is she really 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 small is she a character like that size or is she really really big and that's a giant monstrous uh so she's i guess she's a dragonfly so based on the cover this is what we have. All right, and see, JG saying Dragonfly is awesome. Is she a really teeny character, or she is she fighting a big monstrous mantis? So uh, inside, oh, all right, we got a tarantula. That looks almost like that dude, kinda. Uh, all right, so we have a bunch of bug people. So bug people fighting each other. This guy, oh, he's ripping off his man mask. The the reveal a mask underneath his man mask. That's kind of cool. So we got some crazy shit going on here. I don't even know what it is, but I'm like, I'm intrigued. I want to read it. Look, this dude's fighting a mantis. Like, that's a little bit different. I like it. Very intriguing. I love this stuff. That's why I get into that kind of stuff. Okay, classic guy. We're X-Men. I know X-Men. They're fighting the Phoenix. Phoenix is super powered. It has to take the whole team to even come close to one-tenth of her power. Uh, you know, cosmic shit goes on. It's, it's like you kind of already know what's going on here. And then... Um, some kid is getting probably his first mutant powers in the, the playground, getting bullied, and then he catches powers, and then it looks like he burns the orphanage down or something after he gets pissed off. Standard kind of X-Men fair. Uh, X, I mean, not saying it's bad, though. I love the X-Men. I'm just saying I know what to expect when I read an X-Men book. I already know the type of stories it's going to be. Uh, evil Superman. We know. He's super-powered, and he goes evil, and he has to fight the Teen Titans. We know what this story is going to be like. It's going to be an epic battle between Superman and the Teen Titans. And then they're going to figure out why he went evil. And they're going to solve it somehow. Oh yeah. He's being controlled with energy by some dude that took over his powers and turned into him or something. So you kind of know what's going on with uh, you know, DC and Marvel stuff. And I'm not saying it's bad. It might be really good. I'm just saying it, I get a little bored with it. Okay. Let's see, we have uh, Detective Con So we got, oh, we got some newer stuff in here. Okay, that's kind of neat, actually, because I don't have a lot of the newest stuff. So I actually do like getting, when I get cheap books, I love getting newer things just to fill in my collection. Oh, that's a Kenneth Rockefeller cover. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. I love his artwork a ton. Uh, we got Detective 1026, Detective 1033, Detective 1037. 
Detective 1044, Detective 1047. Oh, these are great. I like this artist, too. I forget his name, but he did a lot of really cool detective covers. Uh, Punisher 404. We got a uh, freebie-type comic, Tarzan. Super Pro, everyone's favorite, number nine. Uh, Magnus Robot Fighter, X-Force 8, Avengers 345. Okay, those are pretty fun. I uh, I can't believe I'm three hours in and there's still 73 of you guys here. I love you guys. You guys rock. This is amazing fun for me. Oh, wow. I wonder if I got these from someone else or if these were in the cheap box. Yeah, exactly. It's it's so it's used so often that um it's it's kind of boring for me, right? Like, I've seen it. It's like Batman needs to keep kryptonite just in case Superman goes evil again. You know, it's that kind of thing. Uh, Detective Comics Annual. Detective Comics 1006. 1007. Uh, 1008. 1009. All right, these are super fun. Uh, 1012. Oh, thank you, Tina. I appreciate that. This has been fun. I really like doing my Sunday night comic videos. I missed a couple weeks and I was feeling really sad about it. So, honestly, I'm so happy that Jason and Sean was able to put a box together for me. It really just made it easier for me to do this uh, Sunday night video. So, I appreciate it. Uh, Cat and Mouse. See, I'd like, I want to flip in it because I want to see what's going on here. Just because I see this crazy evil hand with giant long claws. And then I see this cop or detective. He's terrified. And then we see this vigilante guy. He's like, all right, I'm going to help. But he, he, look in his eyes. He looks a little worried. So he, I don't know. He's like, oh, maybe I can't stop a dude or this woman with these claw fingers. Kind of interesting looking. Superman, number 65. Duplicate that. Superman, super, duplicate that. Superman. Lots of Superman. Superman, Superman. Superman, Superman. And this era of Superman, it's so common to get him. It's just not that exciting. Uh, Secret Wars 2 crossover. Spider-Man 111. I, I love the Secret Wars 2 storyline back in the day. Like, as a kid, I absolutely loved that. Captain America 34. That's a cool-looking cover. Uh, Justice League America 67. Jason, if you're up for it, I mean... It really, it makes it a lot cheaper and easier for me to do big, long videos instead of spending, like, so much just ordering stuff online. So, it's actually, it's really good for my wallet, but also it's good for my mental health, and it's good just to have stuff to show. So, it's fun. So, if you're up for it, I would love to have you go out digging for me. Uh, especially, I mean, if they, they sell comics, they're so freaking cheap. Uh, Superman 70, 71. All right, yeah. So the, this whole 90s Superman, this is right when, like, I quit comics. So this stuff just, I like, makes me want to rage quit again a little bit. <laughs> Not that I hate it. I just, like, yeah, whatever. Death of Superman, Doomsday. Yeah, let's everyone buy a closet full. Keep them in, in the box. Don't read them. It doesn't matter how it looks. It just, it's it's the death of Superman. It's worth something. We got to invest. Okay. Are you guys still up for another box? I have one more long box to go through. If you're up for another box, I'll do another quick long box. That I, I'll probably go through it quick unless there's indies again. Um, but if you guys are getting tired, I, I mean, I could call it quits too because I'm actually really tired myself. Actually, I'm going to take a water break. I'll let you guys vote. Mm. Water. Have a soda. Get a little blood sugar. Or maybe you guys are all already passed out and you just left your phone streaming. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised at that too. I literally, last night, I uh, uh, because I did the pop walks, I literally, uh, I got home and I passed out in like four minutes. Okay, let's get another box. Let's get another box. I also, I do want to finish going through these boxes too so I can start sorting them so I can start pulling out duplicates and selling stuff. So it's helpful to get them. Um, all, right, you're, all right, Jason, what I'll do is I'm going to go through this box super quick. I'll only slow it down if I see some fun indies or something that catches my eye. This is what the box looks like. It looks like, uh, oh crap, indies, okay. <laughs> all right, we're going to do it quick. Uh, we're gonna do this one quicker though. We'll just you guys give me a topic and maybe I'll just show you books while we're talking. Um, 
Oh, volume. I really want to finish my Silver Surfer Volume 1 series because I love... That's such a great set. I love all the covers. Uh, I've misplaced my number one. It's been missing since uh, like 2012 or 13. I don't know what I did with it. I don't know if it got stolen. I don't know if I accidentally like gave it away or something. I don't know what happened to it. So it's driving me crazy. But I love... Uh, uh, yeah, all right. But then after this Mike Grell action comics, like I, if we start out and if the books start looking beautiful like this, I don't know how fast I can go because I don't want to go fast through a like a Jaws homage. Okay, we can when we get to oh wow, this is actually sellable stuff. Oh, Vigilante, love Vigilante, Mega Man, Terminator, Terminator, Justice League. All right, I like the Bronze Age stuff. Oh, this is this is good stuff in here. I didn't realize I had some Bronze Age. I should have looked up these books. I could have done these like weeks ago. Uh, Jason, sure. I uh, totally up for uh, well on Tuesday or Wednesday. I am going to Anthony's to pick up another big batch of stuff. Um, but yeah, I I definitely want to get more stuff sorted. I am overwhelmed right now at the moment. Actually, I kind of need help refiguring the basement as well because I want to either sell. Oh wow, Brave and Bold One Hundred Six. I want either oh little dot twelve cent little not in the best shape, but oh and now it's in worse shape. But oh, and the back cover is cut up. But, <laughs> okay, maybe it's not that exciting because of the condition. Okay, wait, Metal Man 103? That's kind of dope. Uh, but yeah, I, I want to either get rid of, donate, or try to sell cheap uh, all the records I have down here to make more comic sorting room. I need to make more rooms just so I can have, I kind of want a wall of long boxes that I can have like 100 empty ones so I can sort into and whatnot. I want to speed up the process and I also want to make it so that I don't have to like move boxes around and like put them away every time I want to sort. I want to be able to just like if I want to take an hour, sort and then just like get back to it the next time. Uh, we got some Nick Cardi covers. Okay, that's some actually pretty cool stuff. All right. All right, we got um, okay, Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh. We got those Punisher, Green Arrow, uh, Magic Johnson, Icarus. All right, Prisoner. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. This will go quick if I keep finding five and six copies of things. Good America, Badger is fun. Do like that. I want to get all this first stuff sorted into my first run so I can see if there's ones I need. All right. I think we, we gained... Do, no, we no we lost two people. I was thinking the audience is growing for me. They go through these quickly. <laughs> uh, that's a fun cover. I actually kind of like that cover. Uh, DB7, Powerline, Captain Adam. Uh, Dishman, I don't think I have that. That's actually kind of goofy fun. Okay, kind of like that. I want to read that one. A uh, checkmate, Captain Thunder, Black Condor, a couple of those, Eternity Smith, Comico, uh, Scout Shaman. I think I, uh, Sean and uh, Jason got me that one. Sable, Champions, X Mutants, Daredevil, Leonard Nimoy, uh, Shazam, Jonah Hex, The Ray. Okay. I'm going to just blast through these. We're like a 20% through. Because I am really tired. But it would be really nice to just finish going through these. Just to see what's here. And then um, I get to sorting these very soon. Ninjack. Azrael. Batman. Extreme Justice. Okay. Perg. James Bond. That's kind of a cool cover. Ooh, interior. Oh, can't show that. Sexy time. Uh, really beautiful painted cover or interior. I love that. I love when a book has a beautiful painted cover and then you flip through it and it's just as beautiful inside. That doesn't happen that often. So when it does, it's such a treat. Uh, these are ripped up. I'm not sure what that is. Fantastic Four with the cover ripped off. Okay, I should probably just get rid of those. All right, Spider-Man books are good for the shop. Honestly, like half my sales are always Spider-Man books. And then the other half is like Batman. And then everything else is like occasionally here and there. Oh, and then three copies of that. Okay, get rid of those. Yeah. <laughs> Salty, I just realized you West Coasters. Yeah, what time is it? Eight o'clock in the evening for you? <laughs> Still early. It's all good. 
Yeah, right now I probably have my regular Pop Walks crowd hanging out now. Nexus 51, Racer X, uh, the Griffin. All right, I do love that there's a lot of indies in this box as well. This is actually really cool to me. Uh, Shadow is cool. Love the covers on those. Uh, Sandblade, Robo, Hunter. Yeah, I do like the way these look. They, it almost looks bad, but good at the same time. Uh, Southern Knights, like, but good in a fun way, not good in a quality way. Eternal Warriors. Uh, Superman. Book of Magic. Uh, Death Wish. That cover's actually really fun. Ooh, wow, the interior. Love the color on this. Okay, that's a beautiful book. Nightmare. Bishop. Okay. Oh, it, it is Monday. We're on Monday now. Yeah, I, should, I always... Spider-Man is probably about 50% of my sales. Batman's probably about 25 And then all the random stuff is all the 25 If all I had was Spider-Man comics in the shop, I'd probably be fine. Because I don't really... Comics don't sell that well for me. But I also don't sell big and key issues. I just like to sell kind of like the stuff that the moms want to grab for kids or... Or someone who just wants to read something will grab it. And so, and that's what I keep. I try to keep as much like Spider Man, X Men, 80s goodness, like the stuff that people want is kind of what I, I try to keep in the shop. The indies, I don't know if indie sells that well, I, but I really don't put it out that much. I probably should, but I also, the indie stuff is kind of the stuff that I, um, these are kind of cool. The indie stuff is the stuff I kind of bulk sell when I do. Uh, epic stuff. Uh, Flash Gordon. That's cool. Doom Patrol. Love Doom Patrol. Oh, that's Eric Larson Doom Patrol. That's kind of neat. A Legion of Superheroes comic. Odyssey. All Star. Deadshot. Okay, move those. Okay, we're uh, we're forty percent through. We're gonna blast through this box in like twenty minutes, so Jason can go to sleep. So I can go to sleep. Actually, I, I have two hours to clean up after this. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to go home and go to sleep for. Uh, like an hour. Uh, the official Rip Kirby, Nyoka, the Jungle Girl. This is a reprint, I think. No, that looks like a uh, newer drawing, but it looks really nice. Okay, I like that. That actually looks kind of cool. Iron Man, Silver Surfer, Green Lantern, Hawkman. We'll just fast forward. I'm just going to go through these quick. See if there's anything that catches my eye. Uh, Dark Shadows, that's cool. Oh, interior is gorgeous. Absolutely. Like, imagine how long it took this artist to paint this. This is like months of work right there. Uh, this guy spent four minutes drawing this cover, though. Oh, colors did kind of a fun job inside of that, though. Uh, Justice Machine. Actually, I want to see what that looks like. Looks all right. New Guardians. Xenon. Love that. E-Wire. St. George. Wow, that cover is kind of cool. Uh, Solo Avengers. Oh, uh, Perez. Wonder Woman. That's kind of nice. That's a little gem hidden in there. Man, I, like that kind of stuff, I'm always shocked because I'm surprised someone didn't grab it when they were selling them for a dollar. Or something like this. Surprised someone didn't grab that for a dollar. Uh, something like this, I'm, you know, not everyone wants indie stuff, so I'm not shocked. Man, I love the interiors of this, though. This is gorgeous. I'm trying to do this fast, but this book, every time I open up one of these Whistler books, I'm like, wow, that's like a beautiful... I really, I need to read that series, I think, because that's gorgeous. Gorgeous. All right, we hit the halfway mark. Halfway mark. Okay, we got some more first goodness. Uh, Justy, some some more uh, manga from the 80s, early 90s. Uh, Pineapple Army. I think this is a manga as well. Yeah, it's a manga. So it looks like a very 80s manga, which is awesome. I love it. But then they gave it this like really quirky, artsy cover, which is kind of cool, actually. I like that. Like I wouldn't even think that was a manga by looking at the cover. All right, Justice League. I, I have a feeling some of these are Adam Hughes covers. They kind of have that look. Grimjack. Uh, Mrs. Tree is cool. I like that. Area 88 is fun. The Mark. Deadshot. Detective. Alien Legion. Captain Adam. Superman. Twilight Avenger. I'm actually really digging the way this guy looks. I don't know if I like the interiors, but the covers I keep digging. DB7. Flash. Uh, one of these fun uh, Manwa. You know, Hong Kong comics. That is awesome. Oh, this looks cool. Cool looking sci-fi comic. Fusion. Uh, interior looks okay. It's kind of fun. All right, that's cool. like that. like that. Okay. All right, we're past the halfway now. 
All right, this is the quick box. <laughs> speed run, speed run the long box. All right, I'm going a little loopy here. Okay, X, uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, three copies of X Factor is just not exciting to me. Someone might want it out there. I just I see it so often that I just like don't get that excited. The new humans. Okay, that looks really fun. Blackhawk. Oh, more George Prez. Another Nayako. That looks cool. Racer X. Another do all right, we're getting some duplicates here. The question, kind of a fun cover. Adam, Superman. Uh the American. Area 88. Uh Strike Force Moratory. I mean it, I haven't read it either, Jason, but it does look like a fun sort of like weird sci-fi series. Uh, Cops, Legend of Kamu, Kamui, always looks kind of cool inside. Uh, Kings in Disguise, it looks like a fun um, a protest story, something it looks kind of cool. Flash Cable, okay, we're going to blast through these. Well, thank you, Tina. <laughs> uh, uh, my loopy... Really tired, exhausted, speed run is, is still entertaining, which is good. <laughs> I'm happy. I, 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 I got to be entertaining. If you guys hang out with me for four or five hours straight, it's got to be entertaining. <laughs> or we're all just a little crazy, one or the other, but that's okay. I appreciate that you guys want to hang out in my crazy world. Uh, Batman 517, Task Force, Robin 16, Outsider 17. Okay, yeah. This 90s stuff, I just... Uh, I like that one a little bit, but like a lot of this stuff just kind of bores me. Silver Sable, Silver Sable, a whole stack of those. Death Heads. Okay, big stack of that. The Ray. Okay. All right, we uh one third left. I know, I actually almost prefer it out because I flip through it more often, and I think the flipping through it is actually... Um, Kind of more fun, actually, right? I almost prefer a cheap box with stuff without bagging boards. Because I'm not, I'm not buying this stuff because it's valuable. I'm buying it because I want to enjoy the artwork and the covers and the story. And, and like, you know, this car, it's, it's destroyed. Let's flip through it. It's, yeah, it's 90s image. 90s image, yeah. I'm a bit excited. I'm a lot of excited. I'm, I'm a dump truck of eccentric, Tina. So I appreciate you. <laughs> hey, Suboff. Breakfast comics. I love it. Breakfast comics. All right. Oh, there's a whole stack of those. Uh, Web of Spider-Man is always good. Spidey. There's a whole stack of those. Silver Sable. A whole stack of those. Really hope people want Eclipse. Oh, this one is the one that used to have a gem on it. So it looks like the gems were ripped off all the covers. That gem is really annoying. Yeah. Okay. All right. Boring. Boring. Okay. 81, Superman. Uh, it's kind of a fun wharf cover. I like that. Okay, these are kind of fun painted uh, Star Trek covers. I've had a few people looking for Star Trek stuff in this shop lately, which is Star Trek usually does not sell that well for me. So I feel like I need to find a little bit of Star Trek for the shop. Because whatever I have, I keep selling out of whatever I find. Oh, yeah. I do love these manoirs. Like, anytime I get them, I'm just thinking, like, how gorgeous they are. And I really need to sit and read them. Like, I love that panel. This panel down here and that panel. Like, they look so... Just the color. Everything about it just looks really enjoyable to me. Um, Batman, Superman. X-Factor. Aquaman. Action Comics. Teen Titans. Justice League. Justice League. Shadowhawk. Shadowhawk. Like, 90s images. Just like, eh. I guess I can't sell it. I, I like it a little bit, but I also don't. Uh, Team Young Blood. Team Young. So when I see, I'm just like, if, uh, uh, I feel bad. If you guys love it, though, I really I feel bad. I don't want to make anyone feel that I hate what they love. I just uh, I've seen it for so long. I've seen it's right in that era that made me quit comics. So it just reminds me of a time that I didn't like comics, and that's not cool because I love comics. I love Star Trek. I am a big Trekker absolutely love all the series i haven't watched the newest ones though because i haven't paid for any of the newer services i should though i also love the orville to me the orville is the best newest star trek absolutely love that show i think it's probably one of my all-time favorite shows supreme madness supreme 
Okay, all right, let's go do this quick. All right, the end of the show, we're hitting just the really, the dregs of, like, I don't even want to show these on video. <laughs> I feel like I'm wasting my life right now. What is going on? Okay, one more handful. There we go. One more handful. Okay, was that fast enough for you guys that need to pass out? Action Comics. I was thinking of doing a pop walk tonight, but I've been doing this stream way too long, three and a half hours, that I should uh, I should probably quit for the day. Maybe I'll do a nice earlier day walk tomorrow, though. Not sure. We'll see how I feel. If I feel as tired tomorrow as I did today, then probably not. Superman, Superman. Okay, so we got some 80s or early 90s goodness. Like, I kind of like this a little bit better. I don't like this as much. Just I... I don't know. I just don't like where comics went in the 90s. I feel like it lost its special spark. Okay. That's a fun cover. I like that one. Like, I like what is it? I don't know this one, right? There's a robot guy that's anti-fist. Like, down with the fist, whatever that means. He's being destroyed by RoboCop or something. Uh, and then there's a woman that's like kind of like it's being a little bit salacious right there and she's being covered but like why is like what was she doing before this robot started and then like i don't know what's going on here i'm very curious now oh superman's in outer space so hopefully it's a story where superman's not even in it maybe he's on another planet uh all right there's the robot dude with another robot dude fighting the robot dude or the armored guy Ah, uh, I don't know. There's a whole story about this robot fighting this armored guy. Superman's out in outer space, not even in the storyline. That sounds more interesting to me. <laughs> okay. Doom, 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 doom. Oh, now there's a robot Superman? Is that even related to the other one? No, I don't even know. Okay, interesting. All right, that's it. Box is done. <laughs> it's a quickie box uh no that doesn't sound right either <laughs> okay well let's not go there i am really tired it's been a fantastic long three and a half hours i hopefully in my tired state you guys are still entertained uh, i'm sweating so i appreciate you guys i love you guys i will see you sometime this week maybe tomorrow maybe not i don't know i'll see how i feel all right thanks for